Support for this podcast comes from the Utah Office of Tourism, announcing the Four Corners School's Canyon Country Discovery Center, offering hands-on exhibits, educational tours, and a variety of field-based hiking and rafting adventures. From day trips to week-long adventures throughout the Colorado Plateau, nearby attractions include Canyonlands National Park, Hovenweep National Monument, Natural Bridges National Monument, Monument Valley Tribal Park in Cedar Mesa. FourCornerSchool.org. Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. Blast off. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators, the man they call... Ghost. <laughs> What's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 318. Number 318 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio Show. And before we get into anything else, I want to say my apologies for missing yesterday's broadcast. All right, but I had to take care of some, quote, inside business, some inside kind of thing. Uh, Don't want to get everybody the 411 on what we're doing out here, but uh, let me tell you something. The Capitalist Army has conducted some major operations and we're uh, doing some serious business to make sure that this corrupt Hillary Rotten Clinton, (laughs) you hear him? I hope you heard him, Uh, and we're going to talk about that here in a second, but we're we're trying to do whatever it takes to make sure that this disgusting, filthy, criminal-minded, disgusting Hillary Rotten Clinton does not steal the election, folks, because let me tell you something right now. There is a mass exodus going on in the Democratic Party. But before we get into all that, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are now live, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. The official website of the True Capitalist Radio show is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Now, folks, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is politicsghost. All one word and no underscores. Politicsghost is the name to follow, folks. So let's get right into it because we've got a lot of things to talk about. My apologies once again for the folks that were expecting a live show yesterday. I did conduct a Sunday broadcast, and let me tell you, I was bittersweet to say the least. Uh, I don't know if you folks uh, listened to episode number 317. It was my 500th episode where I thought I was going to get a little bit of respect and and that sort of thing. I was going to give myself a major award out here, and I don't want to give it away. I don't even want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, I almost thought about pulling that episode because I was so disappointed and wanted to make this one the 500th. I'm not even sure. I don't really know. But either way, folks, I'm in better spirits. Uh, We are winning, for Christ's sake. I'm talking about the capitalist army and the Trump train. We are winning. We have conducted all kinds of political uh, operations that have basically unearthed a bunch of revelations that have been known to us that have been listening to this broadcast for a long time. But those... Even idiots at this point are starting to recognize 
that there's something rotten in Denmark, to say the goddamn least. And let me tell you something right now. Ever since the DNC leaks, and let me tell you something right now, that has been the rocking of the Democratic National Convention. It's been causing chaos. <laughs> I've been enjoying it, folks. I don't know about you. But I've been enjoying the utter chaos and the attempt by the Democratic Party to act like communist leftist suppress, suppressist, you know, suppressing uh, any potential dissent within the convention, within the delegates. Uh, it's just been utterly disgusting, to say the least, all right? And the utter pandering. Uh, you know, to all different kinds of groups. It's just, it's just pathetic. But I've been taking glee and hearing all the jeers and boos, uh, the chants of Goldman Sachs. Uh, you know, I mean, they were even booing Bernie Sanders, boy. They were even booing Bernie goddamn Sanders. <laughs> oh, my God. It's utter chaos. And literally, the reason it's utter chaos, folks, is what the mainstream media is also trying to suppress, which is the DNC leaks, which for you folks that have been living under a goddamn rock, it is the hacked emails uh, that were uh, data dumped via WikiLeaks, folks. Now, uh, I know you folks have probably read this report already, but the Democrats are trying to attempt to do some level of damage control as it relates to all the disgusting filth that is coming out from these hacked emails, for Christ's sake. I mean, they are not the uh, holier-than-thou virtue-signaling uh, Democratic Party that they're trying to paint itself out to be. I mean, these people are vile, racist, homophobic, uh, uh, I mean, anti-Semitic, uh, disgusting, filthy scoundrels, and the truth is in these emails, for Christ's sake. And let me tell you, it's not the only set of emails, baby. All right, but I'm, we'll get to that in a second. The Democrats are now trying to spin this narrative that the DNC leaks, even though the content within it is absolutely accurate, they cannot deny it, for Christ's sake, all right? They're trying to spin it that they're saying the Ruskies were the ones that hacked the goddamn DNC computers and are releasing this information. Now, if you believe this first and foremost, folks, you're an idiot, all right? I mean, give me a goddamn break. I mean, I think I alluded to this on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm going to roll, just go over this one more again, just one more time, okay? If the Russians had anything to do with this hack, don't you think, instead of data dumping this for nothing, for absolutely free, for Christ's sake, that they would be contacting each and every one of these individuals or having their goddamn Russian spy agents, which are all over America, folks. I mean, there are spies from all over every country all over this place. I mean, and vice versa. We got agents in their country. I mean, you don't even, under, you don't even want to know the black ops game that's going on. But regardless, okay, I'm just trying to say that there was a lot of things that the Russians could have done with this information instead of giving it to Julian Assange. All right, who's uh, held up, the poor bastard's held up in a closet somewhere at the Ecuador Embassy in Britannia. I mean, I, let me tell you, they could have done anything else. They could have extorted uh, individuals within the Democratic Party, blackmailed people. Uh, they could have initiated uh, pushing their narrative. They could have taken control subtly of the Democratic Party through this information, uh, you know, putting people in precarious situations. I mean, they could have done anything if these were the Ruskies that hacked the goddamn uh, DNC servers or the, the computers or whatever they're alleging that's been hacked, because uh, my sources tell me, folks, that they got everything. So uh, we're going to see a lot more data dumps, and that's why you've got these Democrats dancing a fine line at this Democratic convention, and it couldn't have happened at a better goddamn time. Now, do not believe this whole narrative that the Democrats are trying to push forth that the damn Ruskies – uh, are, are trying to elect Donald Trump. That's the most ridiculous, absurd thing I've ever heard in my goddamn life. And that's stupid. That is just so unbelievably stupid, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, I mean, they could sabotage. I mean, if it was the Ruskies, all right, and it was genuinely the Ruski government, that damn Vladimir Putin, which, believe me, I believe he's an unscrupulous Ruski. I don't trust that son of a bitch as far as I could throw his dumb vodka-drinking ass. 
All right. But if it was the Ruskies, these guys would have used this to rig the election themselves, for Christ's sake. I mean, look, this is just the tip of the iceberg as it relates to these DNC leaks. I'm telling you this right now. There is a lot more information that's about to be data dumped, and it's damning beyond this. I mean, let me tell you, this is just something to try to capture the people. This is one of these fish hooks that are trying to capture uh, everybody uh, upon both sides of the political spectrum. But, man, when this other stuff comes out, it's even going to be more damning. It's going to be implicating more higher-level people. And as uh, Donna Brazil, I don't even know if this broad is still the interim chair anymore. I'm not even keeping up with what the hell's happening. I know that they're they, – I don't know if they had roll call. I mean, they were emailing Democratic delegates uh, last evening – that roll call was not going to be conducted on the Democratic floor, that it was going to be conducted at some breakfast in the morning in private. So they're not even going to be able to conduct this roll call uh, for all to see at this Democratic convention. They are so scared, for Christ's sake. The whole goddamn party is in disarray. What did I tell you, folks? What did I tell you? That these Democrats would start eating each other. Didn't I tell you that, boy? Didn't I tell you that? that they would begin to start eating each other, and that's exactly what's going on. And let me tell you, these WikiLeaks uh, DNC hacks of these emails, because, look, WikiLeaks did not hack the emails. I'm going to tell you with almost certainty that Russia did not hack the emails, uh, or the, at least the Russian government didn't hack the emails, let's put it that way. Uh, or Putin didn't have the hack the emails. Putin's not releasing them. Putin doesn't want uh, Donald Trump elected, for Christ's sake. I mean, give me a goddamn break. Stupid, man. Unbelievably stupid if you believe that narrative. But that's what they're pushing. And let's just say for the sake of argument, okay, let's play the Democrats' game for a second. Because you've got to play both. You've got to understand who would believe this nonsense and why, okay? Let's just say for the sake of argument, the Ruskies and Vladimir Putin uh, and, and his cockeyed country, all right, and his government uh, hacked the damn DNC. And let's just say for the sake of argument that they did give it to WikiLeaks. Let's just say for the sake of argument that they dumped them uh, via WikiLeaks. Okay, let's just say that's, that's true. Let's just go with the DNC narrative just for a second, just for a second. Why isn't that a bigger story in the mainstream, lamestream media than uh, the actual – I mean, I, I'm just saying. I mean, we're seeing other nonsense. And look, I'm not going to say uh, other things that are in the media is nonsense. I mean, we're seeing a lot of terrorist acts. We're seeing a lot of weird shootings happening, which are uh, rather interesting, to say the least, in its timing. Uh, but as I stated, why isn't this a bigger story? I mean, if – that if the Russians, quote unquote, uh, Putin hacked the DNC, and uh, oh, it's the Ruskies' fault. Putin wants to elect Donald Trump. Doesn't that put the integrity of what Hillary Clinton did with her damn private email server that she kept in her bathroom? I mean, doesn't I mean you understand what I'm saying, folks? This is why this is not a bigger issue, and I think that we need to keep pushing this issue. There's going to be another data dump of WikiLeaks emails, okay? It's going to even be more damning, believe me. And when it happens, you as an individual need to keep this – it doesn't matter what your politics is at this point, all right? It really doesn't matter because what the Democrats have been uh, obviously unearthed of doing is being complete and utter slimeball bureaucratic hypocrites – that yours truly has always said they always were. And I'm not trying to say the Republicans are any better either, folks, because believe me, uh, there's a lot of Republican establishment out here that have been working in conjunction with these sleazeballs uh, that are being unearthed in these WikiLeaks uh, uh, emails that have been hacked. All right? I'm just stating the obvious that all you folks that have feel betrayed at this point, now I'm talking about you Democrat folks and you Bernie folks, and let me tell you, look, I, I, I still feel an element of gratification for you burn victims. Uh, I told you so. I've been telling you since March that this man would never get the election, or excuse me, he'd never get the nomination. And even if he got the nomination, he's not going to get the nomination. I, I told you he's a patsy. I told you that this idiot had no intention 
of taking the nomination. He had no intention of fighting. Uh, you had Jill Stein saying, come aboard, uh, be a part of the Green Party, uh, keep running. He didn't. I've always said, folks, that in my opinion, Bernie Sanders was out for himself. And now that he's got a whole bunch of money, and I'll talk about that in a second, he wants to take it and run, in my opinion. All right. Now, I want to get back to this chaos because a lot of things happened yesterday, and it was great. All right. I mean, he had a whole bunch of speakers yesterday, and every single one of them got booed uh, to no end. I mean, you know, every one of them, man. I mean, even when the gavel hit the damn uh, the, 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 the freaking podium there, for Christ's sake. I mean, everybody was getting booed. Did you see uh, Pocahontas, uh, Elizabeth Warren, you know, Chief Slapaho? Yeah, Chief Slapaho. Oh, I'm an Indian. Just look at my high cheekbones. You see, that proves that I'm Indian. That's why I'm justified in getting all the favorable treatment of a minority, because I've got high cheekbones. Anyway, folks, did you see her speak for Christ's sake? They were booing the bee Jesus out of her. All right, and moreover, I heard Goldman Sachs chants. I mean, it was just beautiful, man. And then when I mean, I mean, there was just all kinds of speakers. Of course, uh, uh, the first tranny came out, Michelle Obama. She came out, and and you know how they tried to bloviate this tranny speech for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? I mean, to be honest with you, that was the most horrible, disingenuous speech I've ever heard in my life. I mean, it sounded so rehearsed. I mean, it, it sounded like, you know, a two-bit, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know, like like some B actor in a Morris Chestnut movie or something. I'm serious. I mean, I'm not joking around. Some two-bit actor is saying, I'm not, you know, shaking her head with, 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 the, with the finger pointing and, you know, uh, you know, Stella got her groove back, you know, all that jive. I'm serious. It looks so disingenuous. It was pathetic. But no, the left, they needed something to point to and say, oh, look, the first tranny saves the day. Mike, I mean, Michelle Obama. Jesus Christ, folks. I'm serious, man. I'm sick and tired of this. And, oh, yeah. Uh, since uh, the festivities are going to continue, all right? All right, since the festivities are con going to continue, let's go ahead and talk about the DNC lineup today. And when I start talking about this, and I'm just going to go through it really fast, folks, because, uh, I mean, it's just pathetic, all right? Uh, let me tell you who has already been on as it relates to the Democratic Convention's festivities today. We had, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., the Women's Cock Ass, all right? All right, all, you know, the Women's Cock Ass, you know? All right, now, now, of course, I mean caucuses. I'm just trying to be facetious, of course, folks, okay? But they got the Women's Caucus. They've got the LGBT caucus from 12 p.m. Uh, to 2 p.m., and I'm sure that was a great caucus. Uh, but you see, already we're starting to see, just based on today's lineup that's already happening, the segmentation of people. You understand that? They're trying to compartmentalize people into different groups. What did I have always said on the show about group dynamics? You understand? That's what all this is about. They're trying to put people in groups, and when, when people fall under segmented group dynamics, then all of a sudden people become believing in something, wanting to do something, being proud of something, all right? So right off the bat, they're trying to, uh, in, in, in the first uh, couple of speakers, in the Women's Caucus and the LGBT Caucus, they're trying to separa or separate women from gay men, trannies, bisexual, and who, who the hell comes out and says they're bisexual and is going to you know, be fighting for that cause? If you're bisexual, you're having too much fun you know, to really, you know, I, I would think. I mean, you know, you're taking out of both ends, literally, uh, I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know, I've never heard a, a bisexual activist, and I've never seen, look, I'm out here in Austin, Texas, I mean, this is the home of where, uh, you know, the, the transvestite, uh, you know, meth head, uh, Leslie Cochran, ran for freaking mayor out here, and if you don't know who the hell Leslie Cochran is, well, good for you, lucky you, all right? 
Anyway, folks, uh, let's continue going, okay? We went from the woman's cock ass to the LGBT cock ass, okay? Which sounds like some pretty segmented cock asses, to say the least. Anyway, <clears throat> the next group of people, the senior council. Oh, uh, uh, now we're now okay. It went from it went from woman to gay men to seniors. Now, now it's the senior. Now here come the old people. Let's get their geriatric asses out here. Let's wheel them out. Come on, we got to pander to them. Tell them that the Republicans are going to take away their Social Security and they're going to take away their Medicaid and meh, meh, meh. Let's continue going, shall we? Guess who's the next group that they're trying to segment today? The Rural Council. Oh, so, okay, okay, let's, let's continue. I mean, do you see how many group dynamics that we're getting with in today's festivities, folks? All right, it goes from the woman's cock ass to the LGBT caucus, to the senior council, to the rural council, okay? And for you folks that are unaware, those are for all the farmers. All right, now it's the farmers group, the farmers and the ranchers. All right, let's put those, let's put them in a group, for Christ's sake. All right, let's continue going. We got, after the rural council, it's the youth council. So now we got the young people coming in, riling them up. Do you understand the theme of complete and utter separation that is happening right before our very eyes at this filthy, disgusting Democratic convention, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, what a horrible lineup, man. Horrible. Horrible, man. Anyway, at 4 p.m., we got the gavel in so everybody can go feed their fat asses for a few hours. Uh, maybe catch a prostitute or whatever these freaking liberals like to do out here. Oh, yeah, they don't like to do that anymore. They like to go on, you know, the, the, the grinder apps and, you know, you know, I, I don't know, have circle jerk, whatever. They're, I don't know. I don't care. But the gavel in, then uh, things come back tonight. All right, I believe it around 6.50, if I'm not mistaken, all right? I'm just going to go through these uh, these speakers. Thaddeus Desmond, all right, uh, he does uh, similar work. Uh, Similar work to Hillary's work at the Children's Defense Fund, Thaddeus is a child advocate, social worker in Philadelphia, bureaucrat, okay? We got uh, Deanna Halbert, Halbert, I believe, that's H-A-U-B-E-R-T, of Philadelphia, is a lawyer who works for disability rights organization and teaches those with disabilities to advocate for themselves. Oh, one of these freaking lawyers that are like, hey, has somebody slapped you in the nuts and you happen to have asthma and you happen to have a broken leg at the time? Well, give me a call and we can give you a yeah, five. I mean, you're, I'm just one of those pricks, obviously, all right, in my opinion. Anyway, we got Kerr, uh, Kate Burdick. I swear to God that's the name, Kate Burdick. Kate, originally from Pennsylvania, PA, is a staff attorney at the Juvenile Law Center in Philadelphia. Now, how in the hell are they going to have the youth council and then have somebody, you know, from, like, you know, youth law? I mean, you understand? Oh, Jesus Christ. Who else do we got? Anton Moore uh, from Philadelphia. A lot of people from Philadelphia today. I guess they're going to throw them on the back of the bus, I guess, for some reason. I mean, it's not even Tuesday. I'm serious. I mean, what the hell? Why don't you put some of these folks uh, at least in the middle, all right? They don't need to be on the same stage as Hillary Rotten, although it would help, I would think. I mean, anything would help. That stupid, disgusting, soulless, dishrag, whatever. Anyway, we got Dustin Parsons, all right? Dustin Parsons from Little Rock, Arkansas, Arkansas, uh, is currently a fifth-grade teacher at an elementary school at his home state. Another bureaucrat. Oh, oh, let's just go ahead and give him a speaking engagement over here at the Democratic Convention because he teaches a bunch of fifth graders. You know what, folks? Look, our current education system is a completely broken piece of trash. And in my personal opinion, I just don't respect teachers anymore. They're overpaid babysitters. And I'm way overpaid. Uh, they get these lifelong tenures. They get uh, in, uh, pay increases on an annual basis no matter what job they do. Completely disgusting. Don't want to digress, but once again, an emphasis of bureaucrats, all right? Next per next person for tonight, uh, Jillianne Freeman grew up in foster care. Uh, here we go with this heartstring pulling. Uh, grew up in foster care in Washington, D.C., and is a former intern of Hillary Clinton's Senate office. 
Oh, oh, good God. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. I mean, you know what I mean? Hey, look, uh, since, oh, and, and oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that this is a guy. I, I'm sorry. I had no idea. I don't know what the hell Giuliani, I, I guess, Giuliani, okay, since receiving his law degree, he has worked to bring opportunity to kids at risk. Kids at risk, he's doing what Obama's doing, absolutely nothing. All right? And if you don't believe me, go take a look at Chicago right now, for Christ's sake. Support for this podcast comes from the Utah Office of Tourism, announcing the Four Corner School of Outdoor Education, offering a wide variety of field-based educational hiking and rafting adventures, from day trips to week-long adventures throughout the Colorado Plateau. Nearby attractions include Canyonlands National Park, Hovenweep National Monument, Natural Bridges National Monument, Monument Valley Tribal Park, Cedar Mesa, and the San Juan River. More at fourcornerschool.org. Who's next for crime? This is just pathetic. I mean, so people are watching this. People are watching this. And people are believing this, too. I mean, give me a break, all right? Students from the Eagle Academy, our students from Eagle Academy, okay, uh, let me explain who these people are, right? As Senator, Hillary Clinton supported the creation of the Eagle Academy to educate at-risk youth in New York City. Uh, Eagle Academy was featured in the ad, came through during the New York primary. Oh, oh, I mean, do you understand all this disgusting pandering, for Christ's sake? I mean, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, we want to go ahead and put everything that uh, Hillary Clinton earmarked in some stupid bill somewhere uh, to give funding. Uh, you know, say, well, you know, we got to be a funding to this person, I got to funding to that person. That person donated my campaign, but hey, I got to look good. So, uh, you know, these people are going to work with what at-risk youth? Okay, let's go ahead and give them some. I mean, that's really what this is. I mean, it's just disgusting. Because she earmarked something called the Eagle Academy. All of a sudden, she's some savior to freaking at-risk youth. I mean, look, you want to know what she said about at-risk youth? All right, I just want to say, just once again, for all you people that just want to continue to believe in Hillary Rodden Clinton, this is what she said about at-risk youth in the early 90s. Go ahead and put it on, engineer. We God also damn it. have an organized effort against gangs. Just as in a previous generation, we had an organized effort against the mob. We need to take these people on. They are often connected to big drug cartels. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heel. And the president has asked the FBI to launch a very concerted effort against gangs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Gangs meaning at-risk youth, meaning uh, minority-based youth, inner-city youth, urban youth, Latino youth. That's what that means. Heal! Put you to heel is what she said. And now she's putting up a bunch of people because she's uh, earmarked a couple of things in some stupid bill to give her goddamn uh, constituency money, uh, you know, to fund some at-risk youth nonsense, which, let's be honest with you, it may help maybe one or two kids, but let's just take a look at how much the people that are organizing that organization are making on an annual basis and how much, uh, how, how many nonprofit luncheons they have and, you know, how, how, how much takeout they get. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, folks, this is, I understand how the game works, all right? Let me tell you something right now. I, I don't mean to get off keister here, all right? I don't mean to get off keister, but if I wanted to be a complete and utter soulless nonprofit organization scumbag, all right, I, all I'd have to do, and this is this easy, folks, and look, if you want to go and do it and be a complete scumbag, it's unfortunate, but it's legal, all right, but I, don't, I can't live with myself, I can't look at myself in the mirror. If I wanted to be a scumbag, all I have to do is just go and file with the IRS as a nonprofit organization. It's a, I don't want to get into the legalities of it, but you've got to uh, create what your nonprofit organization is. You've got to build a mission statement. Uh, you've got to apply for it, so on and so forth. Once you're granted your nonprofit organization status, uh, that's when you need to start uh, not only raising funds, but at least having certain monies of those funds going to uh, supposedly trying to attain that mission statement, all right? 
And it could be for anything. I mean, you know, the more heart pulling, the better is usually what it is. All right. At risk youth is always, you know, a heart pulling string. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. And let me tell you something. All right. All you'd have to do is get some of these scumbags that know a bunch of rich people. You know, and rich people got a lot of money to blow. And you know, they don't want to just donate to organizations, nonprofit organizations, because they feel like it. Folks, have you seen some of these bigger nonprofit organizations' galas? I mean, they're unbelievably elegant, uh, you know, pompous, uh, just disgusting, uh, disgustingly, elegantly vulgar, okay? And these are nonprofit organization galas, all right? That's why these rich folk donate to these nonprofit organizations. It's not that they actually give two rats' asses about their mission statement. They want to have the galas that they throw so that they, if they like the gala and they're really impressed by it, they'll go ahead and throw some more money so that they can have another one. And all they, I think, I don't know the laws about this particular thing, so this could be my opinion here, but I think at best all you have to do to donate any of your donations to whatever your mission statement is, whatever your cause is, you just got to do like 10%. 10%. Everything else can go to the bloviated costs of whatever the uh, staff is. So if you created some nonprofit organization, you could literally pay yourself. I mean, let's say on an annual basis you're a hustler and you're able to hustle a whole bunch of millionaires into donating to your stupid scam, all right? And let's say you, you collect, uh, you know, two, three million bucks, three million bucks on an annual basis. You could literally give yourself $500,000 a year because you are the uh, founder, administrator, and you put all these stupid titles on yourself, all right? And then uh, you can have a staff of whatever to do whatever, all right? And then, you know, you can justify eating free by buying the whole goddamn staff and everybody a free meal, or they, it could be donated, too, so it doesn't necessarily become a fringe benefit to your employees. You can have the damn, uh, uh, you know, whoever, you know, one of, the, one of these takeout places donate to you, and they can write that. I mean, do you understand? It's a freaking scam! So, I, I, in my personal opinion, I don't help nobody unless I personally know who they are and they don't ask for it, you know? I mean, me personally, you know, I don't really like – look, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get through with this here real quick and move on. But if I want to help somebody, you know where I go? I go to the service industry. I go to the mom-and-pop shops. I go to those locations where I know that the individuals that I am giving my – and I'm not giving my money to them. All right? I'm not giving it to them. I don't give nothing to nobody. Because if you give something to people, they're going to expect more, and then when you stop giving it, they're going to hate you. They're going to hate you for it. You understand that? That's the whole game. So you don't give anybody anything, but I'll go to the service industry. You know, And I hate these stupid YouTube videos that are viral of these idiots that are virtue signaling, going into some place and giving some waiter like $500 cash or something, knowing that that's going to cause an emotional reaction out of somebody. Because let me tell you, that is the most important thing that you could ever do for somebody. If you've got a goddamn lots of money in your pocket, all right, and you know that it's going to be generously coming in at least for the next year or so, and you feel like living a little lavish, and you feel like paying something back, you should go into the service industry, into the mom-and-pop shops, and be generous with those folks. And vice versa for you folks that re are the receiving end of these generosities as it relates to those that want to go in and give, you know, a $100 tip for, you know, having a drink and, a, you know, a burger. Uh, you know, uh, those that give, you know, generous amounts of business to your small business, you also have to pay it forward by going and doing the same thing. Because people criticize corporate business merging right now with the uh, the American uh, government. Now, the only reason that has been possible, folks, is because we have allowed it to happen. We have not understood that the real answer to our problems is in ourselves. If we would look at ourselves in the mirror and realize 
that where we spend our money is a political statement, man. It's a political statement. It, it states that, look, I'm willing to sell myself out for a cheap-made widget, all right, that is made wherever, but is distributed by this evil corporate infrastructure that I always talk about, that I always hate, but because they've got the cheaper widget, I'm going to go sell myself, my community, uh, my friends, my family. Because, folks, that's what you're doing, folks. I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm never hating on the big corporations. I hate the fact that they've merged with government. I hate the fact that they take our tax dollars. But as I stated many times before as well, we have fallen asleep at the wheel. We have allowed and elected a, bu a bunch of bureaucratic agents of international bureaucratic institutionalism to take control of our government, and that's why we have $20 trillion in debt. That's why we are in the precarious situation in America today, economically, politically, and socially. Do you understand that? That's why. But, folks, if you go and spend your money at these corporations that are not only taking your beans that you have, whatever is left, but are taking also money from the taxpayer system and that are getting generous tax abatements because they're uh, getting large lots of land in certain municipalities and counties, then, folks, uh, you have nobody to blame but yourself. And to be honest with you, folks, I don't blame you all completely. I blame your parents. I blame the education system. I mean, these were the institutions that were meant to be there to make you a person that can be able to deal with these types of problems, be able to understand and comprehend these kinds of issues, and to be able to deal with them accordingly, like an adult with maturity, you know, with an essence of uh, humility, you know, uh, not acting like a selfish, petulant child, for Christ's sake, like most people are doing today. I mean, look at the left. Look at even those on the right with the Never Trump Cruise Crew crap. I mean, I'm thankful that, you know, I mean, I'll give the Republican convention this much credit. They did still look like the adults compared to this first day that I saw on the Democratic convention. I mean, even with the Never Trump Cruise Crew idiots acting like ridiculous uh, totalitarian, petulant children, it still turned out to be somewhat level uh, of civility and unity way beyond what's happened in the Democratic Party. But as I stated, man, all right, the whole reason why we are in a precarious situation is because we are not taught by our folks, all right, by your folks, uh, by the school system, that money is really the power of the people. Where you spend your money is the power of the people, all right? I mean, just imagine if you could get, all right, if you could get enough people to start spending money within your own local businesses, all right, within your own local businesses, for Christ's sake, and, and, and just started eliminating this whole, uh, you know, corporate uh, I guess dependency, because that's really what it is, folks. It's a corporate dependency. I mean, people depend on these cheap products. You know what I'm saying? People depend on these, uh, you know, cheap widgets because there's not enough economic opportunity out here. Now, why is there not enough economic opportunity? Because we're not spending whatever money that we're making within our community. If we were spending the money within our community, folks, uh, that money would circulate amongst different people within the community. If we go and spend our money at goddamn Walmart or any of the other corporations, I'm not trying to just pick on Walmart here, but any of the other multinational corporations, by the end of the evening, that money is transferred out of that community, probably wherever their headquarters is at. I mean, it's in some account somewhere, wherever the main corporate account is. And that money is no longer part of the community. And the only time there's money that comes back into the community is whenever this goddamn uh, big corporation pays their wages to these employees, and their employees are what, eight bucks an hour, nine bucks an hour? And where do those employees go and purchase their goods when they need to go and get consumer goods? Well, the same person that gave them the goddamn wages itself. You understand the game now, folks? 
I mean, this is what people need to wake up to and realize, all right? And the reason that we have emerging with government and corporations, folks, is because the dependency of the American people on the government. However, look at all the people that are on goddamn food stamps. Look at all the people that are on welfare. Look at all the people that are collecting these damn entitlements, for Christ's sake, folks. I mean, we have taken away the market for a lot of goods, which has in turn allowed a few group of, uh, groups of uh, corporations to monopolize the distribution of these goods. Do you understand that? I mean, just take case in point, the food stamp situation. I mean, you know, we have completely taken out competition within the producers who produce our goods and food, at least in America, because they already know after about seven to eight years of Obama that uh, food in general, the growth of food consumption in America is stagnant and limited because there are so many goddamn people collecting food stamps, for Christ's sake, uh, it's a predictable market. You know, once the government gets into any business, it starts becoming a predictable market, and that's why you have our current food producers pre-selling, pre-selling food bundles and cattle and, uh, you know, yields to China. All right, because China, folks, is the – I don't know if you've been trying to buy pecans uh, as of late. You know, I like a good pecan pie. Uh, but pecans are ridiculously high, for Christ's sake. Why is that? Because pecans, I mean, they are loved by Chinese, and Chinese has already made a deal. And I, I broadcasted this back in like 2009, 2010, when they made this deal, all right? And right when I broadcasted that, uh, that's when these damn uh, pecans went up the roof in price, folks. And let me tell you, I'm in Texas, all right? I shouldn't have to be paying lots of money for pecans, all right? But the reason that I'm paying a lot of money for pecans is because the producers that are out here in America, or at least out here in Texas, because we produce a pretty good amount of the world's yield of pecans, all right? Uh, the reason that they're going up is because China has already pre-bought the yields for years to come, for different harvests to come. So right now... Uh, the only people that are going to be purchasing pecans in America are those that aren't on food stamps, all right? And take a look at how many people those are left, for Christ's sake, man. I'm telling you, I feel like an utter idiot sometimes, like I'm the only moron that pays for my own goddamn meal. But anyway, it feels good, though. I Actually, you know, I, I get the good stuff, and it makes all those, you know, yeah, look, I can tell you that these uh, people that are collecting food stamps, they're not rubbing it in the faces of anybody anymore, folks, because they know that, yeah, uh, back in 2009, 2010, y'all got your food stamps. You were able to load up your goddamn carts with a bunch of crap. Now all that crap is raising in price, but your food stamp ain't, all right? You, you know, <laughs> your food stamps are staying the same. So anyway, look, I want to get through this uh, DNC list. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to some Twitter shout-outs, folks. I only got a couple more people. There's uh, Joe Sweeney of New York was a detective. Uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Am I reading this correctly? Uh, hey, hey, engineer, is this right? <laughs> Joe Sweeney was a detective with the NYPD on September 11, 2001, when the towers were hit. He rushed down to the World Trade Center and began digging through the rubble for survivors. Oh, uh, what happened, Democrats? I mean, weren't you the party that used to just completely beat it down every one of your stupid idiot listeners of your propaganda wing media and say, here come the Republicans again. They're trying to juice 9-11. Uh, they're trying to juice 9-11. And here we go, huh? Bringing in 9-11 for your own political pandering. Unbelievable. <laughs> un freaking believable I mean, this is the same Democratic convention, all right? I, mean, I'm not, I'm just, I just can't believe this crap. I'm telling you, I cannot believe this, all right? Uh, they're going to politicize 9-11, okay? Yesterday, they had 61 different speakers, okay? Zero mentions of ISIS, all right? Yeah. Zero mentions of ISIS 
after 61 speakers of day one, all right? And now uh, here, is, this is the prime time schedule. I mean, there's this guy, there's a couple other people, and then there's Slick Willie Bill Clinton himself. Yeah, I wonder what kind of ovation old Slick Willie's going to get for Christ. <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, I can't believe that they are actually trying to – juice, you know, the 9-11 attacks, when they have been so critical of any Republican politician, uh, you know, just saying it in reference to Islamic terrorism, I, I just, uh, what what disgusting, shameless filth, all right, give me a goddamn break. Yesterday, they said zero about ISIS, zero. As a matter of fact, there was no goddamn American flag, did y'all see that crap? There wasn't even an American flag out there at the Democratic Convention, man. What the blue hell, man? Oh, my God. I, I... Anyway, let me continue going, because this is just making me sick, for Christ's sake, man. We got Lauren Manning. Uh, Lauren Manning was a former executive and partner at Cantor Fitzgerald. She's one of the most uh, catastrophically wounded survivors of 9-11. Oh, Jesus. Oh, are you kidding? No way. No way. Back to back 9-11. What happened? What happened, Democratic Party, huh? I mean, you won't even say the words Islamic terrorism, for Christ's sake. I mean, are you meaning to tell me you're going to finally say them today? Are you going to say that? Are you going to allow the people that were uh, afflicted with this terrorist, that you're going to allow them to say that? I mean, what disgusting filth. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, man. Well, who's the next one? There's one more here. Ryan Moore. All right. Ryan Moore, originally from South Sioux City, Nebraska, has uh, – what what the hell is this? Spina fissidif what, – what the hell is – Spina diffusibital plas – Dwarfism. I, I don't know, sir. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. I really don't even care uh, because I'm sure they're poor, utilizing this poor chap because uh, you know he's. He, I mean, he, he's actually opening up for Clinton. Whoever this poor dwarf is. All right. Anyway, he's got some dwarfism and has known Hillary Rotten Clinton since 1994. When his family came to Washington, D.C. for an event to advocate for health reform, health care reform, all right? That, you know, if you all don't remember, Hillary Clinton actually, as first lady, folks, believe it or not, tried to advocate a universal health care bill back in the 1990s. As first lady, folks, all right? That just goes to tell you something, all right? Anyway, Brian Moore, Ryan's father, lost his job when his employer was unwilling to cover treatment for Ryan's health condition. Okay, I don't know. Okay. Ryan has stayed in contact with Hillary Clinton ever since. Oh, well, that's just great. I'm sure whenever she whenever she needs a propped up, uh, you know, disabled dwarf, uh, whenever it's politically convenient, I'm sure she calls up with this poor guy's name. Ryan Moore, hey, Ryan, come on over here. I'm going to prop you up over here and just say Hillary Rotten Clinton. I mean, I can only imagine. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then after Ryan Moore, this uh, disabled dwarf, we got President Bill Clinton, Slick Willie himself. For Christ. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, my God. I wonder what the hell this bastard's going to say, for Christ's sake, man. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he's got his Secret Service detail. Watch his finger, all right? Watch his finger. Because, look, remember Bill Clinton would always, he would never point. He'd always, you know, have his little stubby thumb out. He'd have his, like, fist clenched with his little stubby thumb out and say, I'm Bill Clinton, and I did not have nothing to do with fondling that sphincter. With that cigar, I didn't do it, all right? I'm not Bernie Sanders. I don't tell you to take your underwears off. I take mine off. And then I wick my dingling. I mean, you get it, all right? You get it. Anyway, watch him point in this speech if you happen to see old Slick Willie, all right? And I guarantee you uh, the Secret Service are told, 
I want that one right there. And tell her I'm in room two, 310, right, presidential suite. And that one right there. I'm telling you, Secret Service are going to go up to him and say, uh, ma'am, uh, the president, he would like to meet you. And, uh, you know, we got we got Don P on ice, and uh, you know we got we got a limo for you. You know, Secret Service, and you know what what woman's gonna say no, huh? What woman's gonna say no? Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, look, the reason I said that, folks, is because I mean, last evening's events at the Democratic convention were disgusting. I mean. Did you see they pranced around a bunch of illegal aliens, for Christ's sake? Did y'all see that crap? I mean, which that violates, all right, U.S. Code, uh, what is it, 1324, bringing in and harboring certain aliens, all right? I mean, why isn't there any level of prosecution about this, huh? I mean, why isn't anybody being prosecuted, the damn DNC prancing around a bunch of goddamn illegal aliens, for Christ's sake? Uh, let me let me explain to you. Uh, you had a mother and her daughter, and the daughter was speaking. Uh, I mean, the daughter said that her mother's clearly an illegal alien, and that she's received a government issue letter of deportation. But obviously, her being there, she's ignoring the deportation order. Right? I'm serious. I mean, give me a break. Jesus Christ. And, of course, I didn't want to say their real names. The girl that was speaking was Carla, which I'd like a Mexican check on that girl, to be honest with you. And then Fran- Francesca. All right. And then we got another one. Uh, her name was Astrid Silva. And uh, she goes, I came to America illegally. You know, when I was four years old, we were all, we crossed the Rio Grande on a raft. All right, that's great. You know, why don't you take the skills uh, that you learn here and go make your Mexico a better place? How about that? Huh? I mean, y'all are always waving Mexican flags. And that's why I don't ever understand why people that are Latinos that are in America, all right, or Hispandex, whatever the, the liberals want to call you, all right, I don't understand why in the hell you would be carrying a goddamn Mexican flag, for Christ's sake, when you folks would be shunned upon in Mexico, for Christ's sake, for not even talking the articulate, fast-ass Spanish, for Christ's sake. Have you ever, have you ever heard uh, freaking Telemundo, for Christ's sake? I mean, that's real Spanish, that... Telemundo, no está la manera de hacer decir la verga, no me la manera de decir la verga, culo. I mean, seriously, man, that's the true Spanish out here. And most of the Mexican or most of the Latinos out here are speaking, you know, Spanglish. And that's not something that's looked highly upon. They'll spit on you in damn Mexico out there. I'm not joking around. I, I just, it's, a, it's just a backwards bunch of garbage. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, you got Mexico, complete corrupt government, okay? Complete corrupt government. I mean, so corrupt, they've turned it into a two-tier system. You know, you're either uh, filthy rich or just dirt poor. That's why you got a lot of these folks wanting to come into America. And you see, what the bad part about it is I understand their economic plight. I understand why they want to come in here and they want to make a little bit of money. The problem is, is what they do to that money is they send it back to Mexico. Now, I think it'd be a great strategy, like Donald Trump suggested, because they'll leave if they know they can no longer make money in America. They'll go back to Mexico. They'll get the hell out of here. I'm not joking. I mean, that's the whole reason why they are here. They want to make money, all right? But what we want to do is we want to enforce our laws, and we want to make sure that everybody who's in America is in America legally and loves America and wants to assimilate to America and wants to pledge allegiance to America, that sort of thing. That's what Donald Trump has advocated. It doesn't matter what nationality, religion, or creed you are, for Christ's sake. We want to make sure that if you're going to come into the country that you're going to love the country. You're not going to attack the country. If you're going to live in this country, you're going to make the country better. It's that simple. You're not going to take your money and then ship it off somewhere to some other country. You understand that? And that's what these folks are doing. And Donald Trump has advocated, because, look, we're not going to round up a bunch of people. you just got to make the environment uh, so uncomfortable that it looks better on the other side of Mexico again. All right? First thing you do, I think it's a classic great thing to do, is to deny 
uh, outgoing wire transfers to Mexico. All right, you stop Western Union, you start, you stop all these folks that wire transfer money. Uh, you you give them an executive order to stop for the name of national security for, uh, for temporary, of course. All right, and let me tell you, not only will that send back a lot of these uh, illegal immigrant Mexicans, but that will force. Uh, uh, it'll be a chip on the table for Mexico to build that goddamn wall. That's right. It'll be a guy because let me tell you, if, the, if there is no more money being shipped or wired, I should say, from the immigrants that are making money here illegally and wired transferred to the families back in Mexico, those families back in Mexico wouldn't be able to live and survive, and Mexico would have a serious problem on their hands. All right, <laughs> I'm not joking. All right. And I think it's a brilliant idea, and not to mention cutting off funding for sanctuary cities and see if uh, cities that want to continue to uh, act as sanctuary without getting funding, see how long they'll survive, for Christ's sake. I think that's another great idea. Anyway, folks, I didn't mean to get off long-winded here, but, man, I, I missed a lot of stuff. We still need to talk about a lot of things. I want to thank you for tuning in with me. Uh, let me go ahead and take a swig of this drink right here. And, of course, man, after that last night's debacle <laughs> at the damn DNC, i got to break out the Johnny Walker Blue Label. <laughs> i got to break out some of that. So I want to say cheers to uh, the debacle, the utter disarray, the uh, Democratic exodus, uh, the complete and old, total destruction of the Democratic Party. I want to say cheers to that right there, all right? And I also want to sip on some uh, burn victim tears as well, all right? So cheers to that, baby. <laughs> Three, two, one. Backed by popular demand, Friday's Endless Apps. The people have spoken. You want an endless choice of endless apps for just 10 bucks? You got them. Mozzarella sticks? Endless. Boneless buffalo wings? Yep. Endless. Loaded potato skins? Endless. Your choice, your call. You're welcome. For a limited time, endless choice of endless apps. 10 bucks. On Fridays. At participating restaurants for a limited time. While supplies last, other restrictions apply. Sarah figured out that by switching to Metro PCS, she gets two free smartphones. Your barbecue ribs are the best. Take the rest home with you, Sarah. Just like she figured out that by visiting her in-laws, she doesn't have to cook for the rest of the week. You too figure it out. Get two free 4G LTE smartphones from top brands like Samsung and LG after instant rebate when you switch. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included. See store or metropcs.com for details and terms and conditions. Oh, man. Oh, that's so great. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get to some Twitter shout-outs here since uh, uh, it sounds like a good way to transition. For you folks that are unaware, uh, you can give, get a Twitter shout-out right here live on the broadcast. And the way you can do that is if you go to my Twitter account, Politics Ghost is the name, all one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost. And all you got to do is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, folks. And the tweet to retweet is True Capitalist Radio Now Live. That's the tweet to retweet. All right, folks? Now, I'm a little apprehensive on taking any of this garbage because, man, these people really ruined my goddamn uh, 500th episode last time. And I really don't appreciate it one bit. But let's let's just see what happens, all right? I mean, this is the Internet. This trolls, for Christ's sake. It's what it is. Anyway, we got Exara Hawks in the house. What's going on? We got Ripple, Ripple's Nipples. What's going on? Ghost Jewish Mom. What the hell does that mean, man? My Jewish Mom. I'm not a Jew! Uh, we got Group Poop Dynamics. Oh, that's fresh. Uncle Bernie's Woodshed. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, he took everybody to the woodshed last night, boy. And I'm going to talk about Bernie here in a second because, man, <laughs> woo! Do you feel the burn, boy? Do you feel the burn? <laughs> anyway, we got a, a woodshed love story. What the hell does that mean? Jesus Christ! You see this? Oh my God! We got uh, Krillin in the house. We got the silicone Brony. Uh, 1,212 hours, 1,220 hours of Alex Jones. Uh, shove it up your ass, man. Alex Jones rips me off. All right? 
He rips me off for Christ's sake. Everybody rips me off. And I don't appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I, it's not the fact that they rip me off, okay? I just want a little bit of respect, all right? That's all I want. That's all I've ever asked for. That's all I've ever wanted for Christ's sake. I just wanted a little bit of respect around these internets, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, we've got true clumsy radio. Look, don't even talk about that. Don't even go there. I already sent that major award back. I'm getting my money back on that crap. I'm not paying for that, for Christ's sake. All right? It's your fault anyway, for Christ's sake. People ruin my goddamn 500th episode, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, do you understand that's over 1,220 hours of my life that you people have? Oh, my God. You know, just thinking about that makes me a little nauseous, to say the least. All right? Jesus Christ. We got pecans.wave. What the hell does that mean, pecans? Are you talking about pecan pie? Anyway, we got Butterfingers. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, look, no, let's not go there, right? Look, I'm still pissed about that garbage, all right? I mean, I'm still very upset, all right? I mean, look, I, I mean, I'm still upset about that, man. I, I, I really, I, I, like I always said, I think I deserve a major award, all right? And I still think I deserve some level of major award, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, I deserve some damn respect out here. Jesus Christ, man. I don't even know. Let me let me take a couple of more, for Christ's sake, before, you know, I start getting too upset here. All right, I need to stop. I need to calm down here, all right? I need to calm down, and I need to just chill my ass out. And I need to keep myself focused for the movement, all right? all right? I need to keep myself focused for the movement. I'm talking about the capitalist movement. I'm talking about the capitalist revolution, boy. I'm not going to let you damn uh, troll terrorists and cyber vermin sit here and try to, uh, you know, flap your fat Cheeto-stayed fingers on a keyboard and try to troll terrorist me. It ain't going to do it, boy. Anyway, we got Gurney Sanders in the house. Uh, we got Munich Mall Gun Show. Oh, man, come on. That's not even that's not even right anymore, man. You see how desensitized these idiots are now? I mean, this damn Islamic uh, freaking religion of peace terrorism is happening so often, these people are getting desensitized for this crap. Thanks, Allah. Anyway, we've got uh, Hans Guvensmith. we got uh, Sergeant Yoda in the place. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not saying that disgusting name. We got Southern Red in the house, the firearms guy. Uh, I'm not going to, I mean, you people are getting sick with this garbage. Engineer lives matter. Engineer lives matter. Look, don't talk to the engineer. I'm telling you, you people, you know, uh, yeah, I don't want to get into it. Me and the, I, I took the engineer out that evening instead of him going out and finding, you know, some kind of a damn wedding or something. And, uh, you know, we had a serious talk, and I'm, I told him, all right, I was having a few beers. I gave him a, what the hell they give you, like a glass of milk or something. I don't know what the hell they gave him, but uh, I told them that you people are sick, man, all right? I mean, you Internet people have a lot of problems, all right? I mean, seriously, what the Internet is a manifestation of is the utter disgusting internal true feelings of most psychotic people that are walking around pretending to be other people in real life, all right? And that's really the sickest, disgusting, most saddest part about this whole goddamn thing. I'm going to tell you that right goddamn now. Anyway, we got Capitalist UK in the place. All right, we've got uh, Slap Me Trump. I'm not going to say that, you disgusting asshole. Don't besmirch the name of Donald Trump. I don't care who you are, boy. I don't care who you are. Do not besmirch the name of Donald Trump, boy. Anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a couple more, for Christ's sake, because you people are pissing me off, all right? You people are pissing me off. Teutonic is a Muslim? Are you kidding me? Who made that goddamn name? We got Milek Zergon, Tank Dempsey. 
Uh, we got the Whore Master in the Oh, yes, I am the Whore Master. What's going on? Uh, we've got uh, 1,200 beer cans wasted. Oh, shove it up your ass, all right? Shove it up your ass! We got the Brony Network in the house. Take a Xanax ghost. No, I'm not going to take a goddamn Xanax. Are you kidding me? I mean, you turn out... I mean, I've seen people on that garbage, man. They turn into zonked-out zombies, for Christ's sake. I mean, what do, I mean, I could just go and get drunk and pass out. For, if I mean, you know what I'm saying? If I'm going to do that, I might as well go and, and do it the right way. Instead of having some goddamn pill, sit here and destroy my goddamn liver to begin with, for Christ's sake, you son of a bitch. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not going to take any more, any of that psychotropic drug crap. And in my personal opinion, I don't think anybody should. Uh, in my view. All right? I mean, I think there's a link to all these uh, psychotic freaking shooters out here that we've been witnessing these mass shootings and psychotropic drugs. I think people need to look into that, for Christ's sake, man. And we've got a nutcase society. we got a mentally ill society out here. Anyway, we got Choco Latte in the house. Tor's ear. Uh, we got the Brony Network in the house. we got, uh, I'm not going to say that name. For Christ's sake, no awards for ghosts. No, let me tell you something. I deserve a major award. And everybody who listens to this broadcast on a consistent basis knows that, boy. All right? You know it. You know it. Anyway, who else do we got here? Uh, we've got uh, the Headless Priest. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, you son of a bitch. That's horrible. I don't even, I'm not even a Catholic. I don't even like Catholics. And I think that's horrible for Christ's sake, man. Good God. Oh, my God. God, are are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, look, look at how shameless these people, how desensitized these people are. Look at how desensitized they are. I mean, good God. Oh, oh my God. Give me the mic. Oh, oh, my God. That's just disgusting, man. All right? Oh, Jesus Christ. And look, and look at this. Gave priest a little head. Gave pre- Oh, my God! Oh, Jesus Christ! All right, that, that's it. Whoever made that, they just ruined it for everybody. Whoever made that, they just ruined the Twitter shout-outs for everybody. I cannot believe... I'm serious, man. I cannot believe you idiots, man. I cannot believe you sick pricks, man. I mean, we got these wild Jehudis out here cutting off heads. I mean, they're cutting off heads out here. You people think it's a big goddamn joke, man. Good God. Oh, Jesus. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. All right. That, you know what? That's it. I'm not going to sit here and continue to allow you people to you know, make a goddamn sick-ass mockery of, uh, well, I don't know what the hell you're doing, to be honest. I don't know what kind of kicks you people get. I don't know why you people get off on this crap. I have no goddamn idea, but you people got a lot of freaking problems, man. All right, I'm I'm serious. I got I got uh, you got a lot of freaking problems, man. That's why I'm saying. That's why I said in the 500th episode, all right, that there needs to be some level of college class, all right, just dedicated to this broadcast, all right? And there's going to be a bunch of angles, whether it's media, whether it's broadcasting, whether it's the psychological analysis of you sick-ass trolls, for Christ's sake. (sighs) Oh, my God. I I just, I can't believe you people. You people are sick, twisted pricks. Anyway, look, I'm getting on to something else. matter of fact, I need a drink after that filthy, disgusting display of heartlessness and shamelessness, man. Good God. Oh, my God. That's just disgusting. I, I, you know what? Let's move on. I'm sorry. Where the hell was I, engineer? God damn it. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. I was talking about how he had a bunch of illegal Mexicans uh, being floating, flaunting around out there on the DNC convention, for Christ's sake. And for you folks that are wondering uh, what law uh, was broken by the DNC, let me go ahead and uh, tweet that out for you folks right now. Uh, uh, you know, because, I mean, this is a very important situation because we are a nation of laws, and uh, no one wants to sit here and, uh, you know, enforce the law, especially on the Democratic side, especially as it relates to this goddamn immigration issue. All right? I'm serious, man. I mean, how come no one is making that much of a fuss about it on the uh, on the boob tube? Huh? Uh, I'm telling you, folks, it's proof the collusion. This DC leaks, or the excuse me, the DNC leaks that have been unearthed. These emails, it proves that the mainstream media is nothing more than a propaganda wing for the Democrats. And I've been saying it, and I will continue to say it. And as I've stated this time and time again. This DNC leaks has validated everything that I have said ever since I've come back, all right? And you can look back at the archive at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? Every episode I've ever conducted is time-dated and stamped, boy. You can look back at all the prognostications, all right? You can look back at all the prognostications. Jesus Christ, man. Anyway, let me go ahead and send out this tweet of the exact law that the DNC broke, all right? Uh, here, let me go ahead and put spread it around like wildfire. All right, sorry about that, folks, all right? I, I would tell the engineer to do this, but I don't trust his spelling, you know what I'm saying? I mean, no offense, engineer, you know what I'm saying? All right, because, I'm, uh, look, folks, I mean, we need to spread this around uh, we need to make sure that everybody knows that uh, they broke the law. And this is the exact law, and this is off of Cornell University's uh, website, folks, who has the uh, database of federal laws. Here it is right here. All right. Now, for you folks that are unaware, uh, I personally understand what these Democrats are trying to do. They're trying to nullify the law so they can become above the law, so they can become this new royalty, the, these new group of people that are above the law. And, folks, if we don't have the rule of law that pertains to everybody, then we are in a new kind of uh, postmodern feudalism, to say the least, uh, where these idiots in the damn bureaucracy become the new royalty, and we cannot allow that to happen, boy. Now, anyway, let me get to, since we're talking about all this Democratic stuff, all right, let me get to the Bernie Sanders news, because <laughs> burn victims, baby. They're all burn victims. Do you feel the burn? Huh? Do you feel the burn now? I've told you, folks, I've been saying this since March, that this man was a fraud, that this man was doing nothing but collecting campaign contribution funds from you people. I mean, did you hear his speech at the beginning, for Christ's sake? I mean, this man was boasting at all the money that he basically ganked from each and every one of you folks, all right? I mean, I'm serious. I mean, can you believe that? I mean, did y'all hear him? I mean, just listen to the first two or three minutes of the speech. This guy is flaunting it in your faces. He's rubbing it in your feel the bird faces that he got nothing but this, these, these, all these contributions that average $27 per person, all right? And I, look, I read somewhere, I don't, I don't know if this is true or not, all right, but I read that he his campaign raised somewhere in the range of what two hundred and something million dollars. I mean, Bernie, <laughs> not bad, huh, for a goddamn asshole who didn't get a job until he was forty, and then his first job was putting people on welfare. Literally, that's what that's what his job was. Was his first job at forty, sign up people on welfare. This idiot has done absolutely nothing with his life—a complete lifelong deadbeat. Uh, did absolutely nothing when he was a, a, a politician. All he was was a, a disgusting old blowhard like he's always has been, for Christ's sake. All right. Now what he's going to do, I mean, uh, who knows what he's going to do, folks, but I'm telling you this right now. 
a politician can retire and take all their political campaign contribution funds and transfer it into their own personal bank accounts tax-free, all right? And, and that's if they retire from politics. And let me tell you, that's why you've got Donald Trump going right at the jugular of Bernie Sanders saying, I mean, he, he basically called him what I've been calling him, an outright fraud, all right? An outright fraud, for Christ's sake. I mean, he's got the money to continue this campaign. He's got the clout within the delegate system to be able to make some level of ruckus, at least make himself the freaking vice president. I mean, he's got that level of clout. That's why these idiots do not want to make roll call in public. I mean, they're trying to uh, reorganize this DNC nominator, excuse me, this DNC convention so they don't have any more egg on their face, for Christ's sake. But this guy's not doing it. He is completely selling out, submitting to Hillary Rotten Clinton, the supposed Wall Street candidate. I mean, he is just getting on his knees and submitting, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, I was glad to hear booing during his speech when he was urging his fellow uh, Feel the Burn brethren to vote for Hillary Rotten Clinton. I mean, it was just a, a gut punch to the damn gut. All right, but I told you so, didn't I, boy? <laughs> the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. And let me tell you something, folks. I think I'm going to have a show sometime this week describing how if you really wanted to take control of both parties, you can take over the entire United States. All right? And the reason I want to explain this, because since we're watching right now this presidential cycle, and we just finished watching the Republican National Convention, now we're witnessing the Democratic National Convention, you're seeing all these people as they pan the cameras to the audience, and you're asking yourself, I'm pretty sure, who are these people? All right? I mean, these are delegates? How the hell do you become a delegate? I mean, what makes these people so important, and how are they in relation to the party? And, folks, I'm going to explain all that. I, I believe I'm probably going to do that, if not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. So uh, follow me on Twitter, Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Uh, it is going to be a somewhat serious show, folks, because if you take the information that I'm going to describe in this show that I'm discussing, and you... You listen to it and use it verbatim. You can take over both parties. All right? I mean, you can do what Ted Cruz was trying to do. Because, folks, really, I, and I'm not trying to, you know, legitimize this idiot Ted Cruz and his attempt at trying to usurp in the nomination, but he was legitimately trying to utilize the rules that were in place so that it would be able to supersede any popular delegate count vote. All right, And I'll explain to you how all this relates and how this is even possible. Okay? And how the party, all right, the party, and this is how they were legitimately thought they were going to be able to usurp, usurp the nomination from Trump. The party trumps the government, folks. Always remember that legally. This is why the party can basically make its own rules. This is why the party can change the rules at any time. This is why the party can commit uh, open fraud on the American people, especially on the Democratic Party. You people need to read your First Amendment, all right? The First Amendment has, of course, the freedom of speech, all right, the freedom of religion, the freedom of the press. But there's something on that First Amendment that people – just I don't know if they forget about it, but they don't they just disregard the freedom of assembly. All right. Now let me explain to you what the hell that means, all right? Because our forefathers created a system in which that particular First Amendment was obviously very important. I thought that they should have added uh the right to bear arms in the First Amendment because I think that is an utmost important amendment. But the right to assembly, by definition, through constitutional law, means that an assembly, a community-based assembly, trumps state and federal laws. Because, you see, under the definition of the Constitution, 
if you are protected by the Constitution of the freedom of assembly, the federal government, the state government, the municipal government cannot govern the freely assembled. Do you understand that? And that's why the Republicans, you know, the, the Cruz Crew people, uh, the Never Trump people, these individuals actually believe that they could utilize these tactics by basically uh, usurping the delegates themselves so that, what I mean usurping, uh, taking a majority of them on the convention floor to cause a uh, roll call on the rules and have a new or a motion on the rules to ch change the rules on the floor of the D.C. convention or the, the, the Republican convention. And once they changed the rules and, quote, freed the delegates, because that's what the hell that meant, free the delegates, free the delegates of their obligated duty under the rules at that time to vote the will of the people. But they, because they are the ones actually partaking in the party, because they are the ones registered with the party, they are more important, folks, than you are. Uh, do you understand this? That's why there's nothing that the Democrats can do at this point, or the Bernie Sanders people can do. All right? It, uh, even if it's proven... And it has been proven through the DNC leaks that these goddamn Democrats colluded to make sure that Hillary Rotten Clinton was the nominee, even through fraud, even through criminality. It doesn't matter because under the Constitution's First Amendment, under the freedom of assembly, which is in the First Amendment, that freedom of assembly trumps federal, state, and local laws. That's why these people were able to at least on the Democrat side, to completely steal the nomination outright, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Why do you think that they were able to break this law as it relates to immigration? There's nothing that's going to be done about this, and that's why I brought it up. All right? They cannot go, and there can be no federal authority that goes into the convention because that's a freedom of assembly right there, folks. That is a constitutionally protected right. You understand it? You understand how the game works? How do you become one of these influential people? Huh? How the hell do you and all your crew, if you happen to be a very popular person, how do you end up becoming one of these people? How do you understand the rules? How do you partake in this political process? Because, folks, if you partake in the goddamn political process on the party end, then you can literally change the world. All right? I'm not kidding around. I'm, I'm just saying. Now, if y'all are serious about this, please tweet at me here after the show and let me know if you actually want to hear this information because, folks, I, I know this game. I know what's going on here. All right? That's why it was imperative for me to come back here and make sure that everybody was just so gung-ho about Trump, and not just me, but everybody who's a part of the Trump train made sure that there was no way that this goddamn party was going to supersede the people's vote, regardless if the rules say that. Because remember, they can change the rules. They can change the rules at any time, folks. They can do anything they want. The party can do anything it wants. It is a freedom of assembly. It is protected by the first goddamn amendment. That's why they believe that their word is more powerful than your word, all right? Because, you see, you have the freedom of speech, yeah, sure. But because they have the freedom of assembly and because... Uh, they're the ones that are partaking in the actual political process in assembling and actually partaking in that political process. Their word is legally, legally supersedes you, all right? Because let me tell you something right now. I can tell you how to be these people, all right? All these scumbags. Just look at these, look at, just look at these weirdos. And I don't care what party you go to. I don't care if you take over the Democratic Party. I don't care if you take over the Republican Party. The problem is, is we need, a, we need enough people to partake in the process that are motivated by a single cause of being an honest person and cleaning out this goddamn corruption, criminal enterprise, 
and start, you know, uh, serving with some principles. Because, folks, I don't care if you're a damn Democrat. I don't care if you were a liberal in the sense of the 90s and 80s sense. You know, those liberals, I mean, they actually wanted free speech. You know, they actually uh, promoted freedom of expression. You know, they actually promoted the liberation of women. Now, and I don't know what the hell they're doing now, but, but if you are genuine in your principles and not a bureaucratic scumbag, well, then, by God, go out there and clean up the Democratic Party. All right? I mean, go up there and clean the Democratic Party out. I don't care who you are. Because, folks, because these people partake in the party, and I'm going to teach you how to partake in the party, I'm going to teach you how easy it is to make yourself a very, very important delegate within the party, because this stuff's easy, folks. You just need to take the time to do it, all right? And unfortunately, capitalists, uh, you know, sometimes they don't got the time to partake in this crap. That's why all these people are a bunch of old people. Uh, they're a bunch of, you know, people that look like they got a lot of time on their hands. If you take a look at the goddamn riffraff that's at the Democratic Party, these people look like they're collecting disability. Uh, these people look like they're collecting uh, uh, entitlements. Uh, these people look like uh, immigrants. Uh, you know, I mean, do you understand what I'm saying, all right? I mean, you know, there's a different tone to the different parties. And if you want to partake in this and you actually want to clean this place up, regardless of what your political perspective is, I'll teach you how to do it, all right? I'll do it tomorrow, all right? That's what we'll do. I'll, do, I'll teach everybody that wants to learn how to take control of these damn parties because, folks, if you control the party, you can control your candidate. You can control the candidates. You can control the politicians. You can control these people. You can get people out of office if you control the party. You know that? I'm serious. If you have a majority of folks within your party that are a part of the delegation of, let's say, uh, so and so senator you, you know he he went against whatever the party platform was and you're able to rabble rouse enough goddamn delegates all right and, and at the next convention all right which will probably not necessarily be a uh national convention it'll be a state convention because it's your senator you can literally uh change the rules because this is how the party works you can change the rules to make sure this idiot is just removed from office, from the party. Unless, of course, he decides that he's going to denounce the Republican Party or the whatever party and join some other party. But either way, folks, this is how the system works. This is why the parties have more authority than you, than you do. All right? And it all falls in line with the First Amendment and the freedom of assembly. Now, folks, I didn't mean to get so long-winded about this crap, but... Uh, you people need to understand, uh, when you're not paying attention, you know, when you're out there in la-la land, when you're gaming, or when you're watching uh, anime and, you know, cartoons and going to Comic-Con and all this ridiculous, I'm in fantasy land crap, there's a whole bunch of people that are taking stuff serious, all right? And the people that take stuff serious are the ones that are controlling your life. Do you understand that? They're the ones controlling your life, and they believe that they are above you because they're the ones freely assembling. They're the ones practicing your constitutionally protected First Amendment freedom of assembly right, which trumps federal, state, and local laws. That's why they're untouchable, man. That's why it doesn't matter if there is proof that Bernie Sanders was colluded against, was defrauded. There's nothing that the there's nothing anybody can do about it. It's their party. There's no federal authority that can go in there. You understand that? Why do you think that these elections are always so precariously rigged? Huh? And the only way they can't rig them if there's a, such an overwhelming landslide that it would just you know cause so much of an uproar that it would disturb the order of things, to say the least. That's what I'm saying. You people need to wake up. You want power? Uh, you want to take control? You want to change the world? You want a solution? I'm sick and tired of you people. Ah, oh, he doesn't give any solutions. Well, I'll give you a goddamn solution, you son of a bitch. First off, spend your money wisely and spend it 
on some goddamn independent business owner or in a local service industry and give a generous tip to those that are servicing you. Don't be a cheap bastard. And secondly, I'm going to describe to you how to take control of both parties. It's so goddamn easy. It's pathetic. Because let me tell you what Bernie could easily do right now. Because of this much dissent within the party, he could literally force the motion force the motion to reestablish a delegate count, all right? Right there in the middle of the goddamn uh, convention. He could call for that, and every one of his burn victim supporters, every one of these feel-the-burn assholes would be there cheering, and they would have to legitimately take a goddamn vote and see who actually is going to be the presidential nominee for the party. And they are binded by their rules. They're binded by their rules. Because, look, if the assembly itself is not in cohesion, then by default, under the constitutional law of the First Amendment, under the category freedom of assembly, it's no longer an assembly. You understand that? If they are, that's why they're always talking about party unity and all this crap. You know what I mean? That's why they're always talking about it, because they need a unified party so that they can continue their freedom of assembly. So that's all there is to it, folks, all right? All I'm telling you is, you know, y'all want to continue to be losers? Well, don't bitch when all your freedoms are taken away or what you deem is not fair to you happens to you because you're not, you're not even paying attention anyway. You're lucky that you're even in existence, to be honest with you. You're not even partaking in any part of con- contributing to society. I mean, even if you don't vote, I mean, at least go work. At least pay taxes. Contribute something to this goddamn society, you piece of trash. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, I've gotten a little bit long-winded out here. Uh, I, I did talk a little bit about how Hillary Clinton's claiming that the DNC leak is a uh, Russian hack, and we talked about how that was a bunch of garbage. Did you all hear Donald Trump use Hillary Rotten Clinton, boy? <laughs> Woo! And I'm telling you, that's not a coincidence, all right? All right? I, I, that's not a coincidence. I'm not joking. All right? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You're going to hear a lot more uh, ghost euphemisms from that. I'm just telling you, just, just be on the listen for them. Watch. All right? Haven't you even noticed uh, uh, Donald Trump's cadence a little bit? And, and moreover, <laughs> I don't know if y'all caught this, man, but when, when Donald Trump was uh, saying Hillary Rotten Clinton, I almost thought he was going to break out into a song, into singing like a Johnny Walker blue label tune. Or I'm not I'm just saying. I'm just joking, man. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, I hope that y'all heard it, folks. You're going to hear a lot more where that came from. And uh, I'm looking forward to it because uh, I like to think that uh, my linguistics uh, and my uh, verbiage is unlike none other, to say the least. All right? I'm just saying, all right? That's why I deserved a major award last damn episode. And it got ruined because of you people. I'm glad I'm sending it back. I'm glad I'm getting my money back. All right? I'm not paying for that. It's your fault anyway, man. Y'all people should be, y'all, y'all, y'all people should pay for it. In 1803, a man bought the territory of Louisiana for 42 cents an acre. That was the greatest deal ever, until I made this one. Now you can get my jumbo breakfast platter for just $2.99. Take that, history. You get tasty scrambled eggs, eight mini pancakes, a hash brown, and your choice of bacon or sausage. It's the greatest deal since the Louisiana Purchase. Sort of. The Jumbo Breakfast Platter from Jack in the Box. Just $2.99 for a limited time only. Price and participation may vary. Anyway, folks, I want to talk a little bit about this story here, and then I'm going to get to Radio Graffiti and talk about the last couple of stories in the third hour. Uh, did y'all hear about this Florida judge throwing out a Bitcoin money laundering case? Because, and look, I alluded to this right, I believe, before I left in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. And look, I had a couple of Twitter accounts, uh, and I also alluded to this as well, uh, post-show, that now that the IRS, all right, now that the IRS has labeled Bitcoin as property and not currency, 
I mean, there is a methodology in which that can be utilized as non-taxable income, all right? Now, let me explain why it was thrown out, because uh, I, I don't know the, the whole crux of the case. I didn't really read it, because I don't really care, because I could explain this without even having to read the case, because once the IRS define Bitcoin as property, it is not taxable income. So that's why I encourage everybody to get paid by Bitcoin. Now, let me explain to you something before you go out and wanting to get paid in Bitcoin and then start buying gold chains in Bitcoin and, you know, start, you know, uh, all that crap, all right? Now, I want to explain something to you very, very closely. And, of course, I have to say this is my opinion, and I am just saying this for educational purposes only, all right? I'm, I'm not some tax expert or anything of that nature because, you know, these morons, you got to say this kind of garbage. But let me explain something to you, okay? Just because Bitcoin is not taxable income and it is defined as property, Okay, let's say that you have a bunch of Bitcoin, all right, and let's say you convert it to American dollars. Well, then because you converted it to American dollars and liquidated it, it is now currency and now taxable income. You all understand what I'm saying? So Bitcoin itself, if you transfer it, let's say you become a business, and, and let me tell you, I, I mean, I'm starting to entertain this idea as well. I, I think people, I, I've been looking this up, people have already beat me to it. All Bitcoin businesses, for Christ's sake. I mean, you don't accept nothing but Bitcoin, you don't pay your employees nothing but Bitcoin, so on and so forth. I think that this, by the IRS's definition, is a way in which one can basically skirt around the idea of being heavily taxated on one's personal income during times of financial need. Now, let me explain something to you. I'm not saying that the IRS can't crawl up your ass with a microscope and find out that you did something nefarious related to Bitcoin. So I'm going to explain this to you really quick, and then I'm going to get to radio graffiti. You cannot cash Bitcoin in any currency whatsoever. Once you convert Bitcoin to actual cash, that's taxable income. And if it's in your personal name, you owe 40 plus percent, whatever your bracket is, whatever your income bracket is, you, you got you to gotta pay it right off the bat. And if you don't, even if you haven't been caught by the IRS within 10 years, they can go back and they can crawl up your ass with a microscope and they can find that money and all the other monies that you converted from Bitcoin into currency and tax your ass with interest. And if you can't pay it, they'll throw you in freaking jail. All right. Secondly, you cannot go and get uh, you know Bitcoin and then go out and let's say you buy a car with Bitcoin. OK, let's say you buy a car. And let's say, for whatever reason, you know, you bought the car cash because you had the Bitcoin in the in, – and in, in, in when I mean cash, I'm not talking about actual cash. Let's say you found somebody that would trade you Bitcoin, because remember, Bitcoin is not currency. It is property. You trade Bitcoin for a car, okay? That's not taxable income, all right? Now, the guy who gets the Bitcoin for the car, if he cashes that out, he pays the taxes on that, not you, all right? Now, with you, you have to pay whatever necessary registration fees and, you know, all that inspection and all that garbage that you have to do just to get the car legal, all right? But when you sell that car, okay, when you sell that car that you paid for with Bitcoin, you have to pay the taxes on that goddamn car. Now, if you say to yourself, well, what difference does it make? What if I just go and uh, I, I, I get the Bitcoin, I, I, I get the car, and then I just, you know, sell it, and then I just put the money in my pocket because, I mean, the person paid me cash. Well, no, that's not how it works. You see, you have turned property into liquidation, which now becomes taxable income. Do you understand how this works? All right. So if you are a person that lives in, look, I'm starting to think, man, I'm going to start living a Bitcoin lifestyle or some crap, man. I mean, look, the only thing that makes Bitcoin legitimate is the people believe in it. And because the definition, this is the IRS's definition, that Bitcoin is not taxable income and it is property, well, then, by God, I mean, you know, uh, let, let's start the Bitcoin economy, for Christ's sake. I'm not joking. All right, and this is for American tax laws, folks. I don't, I can't speak for any other uh, 
part of the world, okay? But that's the only way that you can uh, basically not have Bitcoin as a taxable income. You cannot turn it into cash, because if you do, the IRS is going to say that's taxable income. You cannot buy a car and then sometime down the road sell it for cash. That's... Uh, that's the goddamn uh, taxable income. And if you ask yourself, well, who's going to know, folks, that's the bad part about Bitcoin. It's all, you know, transacted through goddamn uh, wires and uh, transfers and codes and, and that sort of thing. And uh, moreover, uh, if the person that sold you the car happens to cash out the money and he gets busted because he doesn't, he doesn't pay for the uh, transition of Bitcoin to cash, He's going to say that he gave you the car, and the IRS is going to come to see you. I mean, there's just uh, you have to understand that there is a direct connection all the time. You cannot evade taxes. You can only tax plan, and that's what I'm describing to you right now. And this is why I am now all of a sudden entertaining Bitcoin as a legitimate a full outright business model as far as I'm concerned. If you're a service industry person, if you're somebody trying to make money on the side, if you're an, uh, whatever, whatever you are, I would, I would strongly advise for you uh, to start accepting money in Bitcoin. And like I said, the only time it is taxable by the IRS is if you convert it to cash. For instance, if you're currency trading Bitcoin, yeah, you got to pay taxes on that, folks. All right, And if you don't, you're in serious trouble. Uh, even if the damn IRS doesn't get you ten, 10 years from now, they can get you up to 10 years from now. Always remember that. Or you cannot convert property that was traded for Bitcoin and then liquidate the property. That will also be, uh, once again, taxable income. So, look, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, is uh, you know, that is a very nice instrument. And now that we have this uh, judge, all right, <laughs> Now that we have this judge, for Christ's sake, uh, uh, out here throwing out this money laundering case as it relates to this, I mean, this just validates the point that, man, if you live a Bitcoin lifestyle and literally just trade things for Bitcoin. Now, remember, whatever you trade for Bitcoin, if it's an actual tangible object, and let's say one day you have a goddamn garage sale and you don't, you don't, talk, you don't even claim what you made, then the IRS is going to just take an estimate, and they're going to estimate a large sum, and then they're going to tack on interest, they're going to tack on penalties. So be smart in tax planning as it relates to Bitcoin. But I think there's a great precedent. I think there's a great win for the validity of Bitcoin, and not to mention, I think that we need to start using it more often. Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get to radio graffiti, for Christ's sake. And I, I'm looking forward. I, I mean, I'm going to have some post-show but to be honest with you, I'm going to try to cut it short in the post show because I believe that this is going to be a fun night of of, of more disorder, and I hope that it happens. Uh, I I haven't I haven't heard anything about this fart in, so I don't know if that happened. But I, I just I cannot wait to see what the hell they give Slick Willie as it relates to his goddamn ovation, all right, or booze or jeers or whatever the case might be, boy. You understand? Give me a break. Anyway, folks, once again, let's get to radio graffiti. The part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you've got to do is give me a call right now. All right. Now, I know I've been saying the number is 516-453-9903. I have been informed by Blog Talk Radio uh, they have switched phone carriers uh, for landlines. So now uh, there's going to be a new number at the end of the month, okay, which is rapidly approaching. And that new number has already been established on every one of the episode's uh, pages, for Christ's sake. And uh, that number is 425-390-6164. That's the new number at the end of this month, okay? That's the new number at the end of this month, for Christ's sake. All right? I'm serious. But, of course, if you still, uh, if you still know... Uh, if you still want to call in with the 516 number, you're more than welcome to. But once again, at the end of the month, 425-390-6164 will be the new number of the call-in to True Capitalist Radio. Anyway, folks, do we got any goddamn uh, uh, radio graffiti calls there, engineer? All right, well, let's go ahead and get to radio graffiti right now. <laughs> All right, who do we got here? We got area code, uh, 
I'm on air code four three five. Radio graffiti. Uh, oh man, is, what, what is that? Is that McJugger Nuggets for Christ's sake? Let me tell you, I know I've said a lot of hater aid stuff about McJugger Nuggets. I actually like that he came out, said the whole goddamn thing was an act, and I appreciate that he's actually trying to help other people uh, try to uh, get other content and trying to show other people that hey, look, uh, you know, if you want to make money making content, this is how you do it. So you know, I like people that uh, utilize their realm of influence. And uh, try to help other people. I actually like that. All right. I mean, look. I, I, look. Uh, what do you think I'm doing here? All right. What do you think I'm doing? I mean, I just shot pearls at you people. I'm shooting pearls. I mean, listen to that Bitcoin information, man. Nobody's going to tell you that in school. They're not going to tell you that in business college. They're not going to tell you anything like that, for Christ's sake. I mean, hell. Just, uh, just think about this. I mean, look. I'm going to get back to radio graffiti in a second. Just think. If you were just mowing lawns, let's say you were a lawnmower or a kid, okay, and you just you tell all of your people that look, I, I accept Bitcoin, and you undercut all the other lawnmower people. You, as long as you keep that in your account, all right, that is an easy way to save money, and it's in your goddamn Bitcoin wallet. All right, I mean, not save money, save property. So hey, if you want to really go to college, well then go out and work. All right, and then you know when you uh, turn 18. Once again, if you liquidate it, you're gonna you're gonna be uh, once again um, taxable. But it actually is a net worth because by the time it's taxable, folks, the uh, Bitcoin is so fluctuating in its value that by the time I mean when I was telling folks on Twitter uh, back before they banned my last Twitter account, I was telling everybody to you know invest in Bitcoin. And, you know, uh, people thought I was an idiot, you know, once again. They thought, you know, stupid, this and that. And, look, I was critical of Bitcoin at the time. But now that everybody's taking it serious and that the government has to redefine it as something else, I mean, it's that's a way to gain some wealth, man. If you, I mean, look, anyone can open up a Bitcoin wallet, man. You don't have to damn, uh, you know, be a uh, – I mean, you don't have to be over 18, you know. I mean, you can make up your own Bitcoin wallet, all right? You can start your own Bitcoin business, your own Bitcoin service. When you actually convert it to currency is when it's taxable. When you convert it to property and liquidate the property, that's when it's taxable. And I'm just saying that in my opinion. I'm not a tax expert, but that's how I read the law, okay? Anyway, folks, let's go uh, anonymous, radio graffiti. Jesus Christ. I mean, you know, uh, these Helen Keller deaf mutes, why are you even clogging up the line there, jerk dicks? 415, Radio Graffiti. Go! God damn it! I got those kids to get present to go. Go! God damn it! Yeah! 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 Son of a bitch! Oh, my God. Look, enough of the spanking crap! Jesus Christ. 616, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, this is Herman King. Now, I would just like to say that I am fully endorsing D-Ray and the Black Lives Matter movement. I think what they're doing... Oh, shut up. Don't even kid around about that, boy. Don't even kid around about that. That's my man, Herman Sugarcane. All right, don't you even kid around about that crap. 469, Radio Graffiti. Tired of wasting human life, fucking people. They call those yada, yada, yada. Why? Because they're not getting paid for it. Because they're not getting paid for it. Because they're not getting paid for it. Goddamn all of you, man. You know, I, you know, shut, shut him off. Look, I don't appreciate you people taking glee in the fact that sometimes you people piss me off. Sometimes you people, you know, get me upset. You get me a little angry, for Christ's sake. I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate that one goddamn bit, you son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. How about 831 Radio Graffiti? God damn it, Rainbow Dash. I told you not to besmirch the name of Donald Trump. Jesus Christ, what the hell is that? What is that, uh, bottles.wave, for Christ's sake? That sounded like some cheap-ass garbage. All right? Jesus Christ. How about uh, area code 484, Radio Graffiti? Oi, vey, Mr. Gestapo. 
stop whipping me so hard? <laughs> Why does he persecute the Jews? <laughs> I may my shekel. They're all over the floor now. I can't believe you would do such a thing. Good God, that Damn, I can't believe it! You people are sick! Damn it, man! You people are sick! I'm telling you, there's something wrong with your head! Oh, my God, for Christ's sake, you anti-Semitic pricks. I, I, I tell you, give me the for Christ's sake, man. I can't believe you people would do such a thing like that. Oh, my God. I mean, you're sick! 501 Radio Goddamn Graffiti. Hey, guys, it's Riding Snake. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Riding Snake? How you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Oh, by the way, just to let you know, do you want to know what's important about, obviously, this number 501? Three things. Number one is the area code I'm calling from. Number two is the number of shows you've done. And number three is the actual start in school for professional darts. And if you, if you can, hold me in the third hour, please. All right, no problem. That's very interesting. Yeah? A little bit of a numerology connection there. Interesting. How about anonymous radio graffiti? Boo, boo, boo. 073 radio graffiti. I can't believe you would do such a thing. Good God! I can't believe you would do such a thing. Good God! Boo, 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 zero, 073, radio graffiti. Jesus Christ, man, I just said that, assholes! I mean, what are you people doing, man? I mean, what are you people doing with your life? I hope that you people become, like, great audio engineers at some point. I hope that's what you're aspiring to be. You know what I'm saying? I mean, seriously, man, I just freaking said that. I just freaking said that, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, 205, Radio Goddamn Graffiti. This is True Holocaust Radio. Holocaust Radio. I am your host, the man they call Adolf Goldsworth. <laughs> Broadcasting from his Nazi headquarters in Austin, Texas. And now he'll take it from here, the exterminator of the Jews, the man they call. Look, 
I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not gonna let it bother me. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not letting it bother me anymore. You people are sick. I, I got to come to the conclusion that you people are, are not right in the head, and I just got to keep that in my mind every time you idiots do these sick ass splices, every time you besmirch my name, every time you besmirch my broadcast. I'm just gonna keep that in my goddamn mind to say the least, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ. Area code five two zero radio graffiti. Look, Ghost, I don't think you deserve an award because your main, your show is just really uh, boring, to say the least. I was just waiting for Radio Graffiti to say this. Oh, yeah? Well, I know, and you wasted about an hour and a half waiting in a queue, for Christ's sake. Can you believe that? And I'm boring, for Christ's sake. Just imagine what your pathetically anal life looks like. I can just tell by the fat in your windpipe. You're <laughs> boring. I mean, give me a freaking break. Are you kidding me? I'm boring. I bet you your whole freaking life's boring, for Christ's sake, man. Jesus Christ, man. I bet you the desk that I have my computer on is worth more than your family's life. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. I bet you I could buy everything in your house with the price of one of my suits. All right? So get the hell out of here. Stop calling me uh, whatever the hell you're calling me. You're still listening, boy. All right? You're still listening. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, who else do we got going on over here? We got uh, area code uh, 210, Radio Graffiti. Look, 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 stop it with this Ghostler crap. Don't call me Ghostler. Don't call me Ghostler, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. How about, uh... Jesus Christ. How about area code 978, Radio Graffiti? This is Tweet Tantrum Radio. Tweet Tantrum Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of meltdowns. Give him respect or give him death. Broadcasting in his pampers in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. Shut up, 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 shut up. And now, he'll take it from here. The connoisseur of cans. The man they call. Go. Look, I'm serious, man. I don't, I don't appreciate that you people take gratification in me suffering. I don't appreciate that, man. I don't appreciate that you people are probably playing pocket pool with your goddamn little pink willies and me in despair. I don't appreciate it one goddamn bit, boy. And you're lucky I'm even here. All right, boy? You're lucky I'm even goddamn here, you stupid moron. And stop making fun of my intro. That's the greatest intro in radio today. God. Oh, my God. Anonymous radio goddamn graffiti. This is True Monkey Radio. True Monkey Radio. I am your host, the monkey they call ghost. The badass of circus. Give him quarters or give him that. They're taking off my hat when they give me a quarter. Broadcasting from a circus side show in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. What the hell is that panda doing right there? Son of a bitch! And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the cutest dancing monkey on the 6th street. The monkey they call... Ghost. Jesus Christ. Get this goddamn mic out of my goddamn face. I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick of this crap. Here comes the monkey crap, huh? Oh, well, no, that's right. It's Pokemon Go, isn't that right? Oh, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Shut up. Jesus Christ, man. Give me the goddamn damn Man, I don't even know. You know, I don't even know if I'm going to do a damn third hour now because of this garbage, man. I'm serious. I mean, did you all hear the last episode on episode number 317, for Christ's sake? I got so disrespected. It was my 500th episode, man. 
I got so damn disrespected. I don't appreciate it. And I don't appreciate it one bit. One more, and I'm getting that. I'm, I don't know. Anonymous radio graffiti. Here comes another Indonesian tidal wave. Oh, Jesus Christ, shut that up your ass for Christ's sake. Anonymous radio graffiti. This is True Rage Foot Radio. True Rage Foot Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of smashing beer can. Give him rising blood pressure or give him death. Uh, you freaking cunt, damn it. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the piss baby of piss babies, the man they call uh, all right, all right, all right. You want to rage quit, assholes? You want to fucking rage quit? Go to a rage quit. Are you a rage quit? You can shut up your ass. I give you time of my goddamn life, and you people can shut up your last damn life. Over 2,220 hours of my life. And you people could care less. Goddamn son of a bitch. God damn it. God damn Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic. Give me the goddamn mic. You son of a bitch. Look, man, I, I don't know. You know, it's up in the air now if I'm going to even have these shows anymore, for Christ's sake, because I get no respect from anybody. Son of a bitch, man. Follow me on Twitter, scumbags. Politics Ghost is the goddamn name to follow, for, for heaven's sake. Politics Ghost. And freaking, at, at least, you cheap sleaze balls. at least... Bookmark my goddamn website, asshole. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Bookmark the goddamn page, man. Anyway, you'll be lucky if I come back here tomorrow. I'll tell you that right goddamn now, man. I deserve more respect. I deserve more respect. <laughs> Support for this podcast comes from the Utah Office of Tourism, announcing the Four Corners School of Outdoor Education, offering a wide variety of field-based educational hiking and rafting adventures, from day trips to week-long adventures throughout the Colorado Plateau. Nearby attractions include Canyonlands National Park, Hovenweep National Monument, Natural Bridges National Monument, Monument Valley Tribal Park, Cedar Mesa, and the San Juan River. More at fourcornersschool.org. Hey! I'm Paul, the guy who used to ask if you could hear me now on Verizon. Not anymore. I switched to Sprint. It's 2016, and every network is great. In fact, Sprint's reliability is now within 1% of Verizon's. Don't let a 1% difference cost you twice as much. Visit a Sprint store, sprint.com slash network, or call 800-SPRINT-1. Reliability claim based on third-party drive test average carrier features differ subject to $30 activation fee credit and valid port and see website for eligible plans. Limited time offer. Offer coverage not everywhere for all phones. Restrictions apply. Jesus Christ, man. Give me my drink. Give me my drink, for Christ's sake. Uh, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My heart's beating like a goddamn rabbit. Uh, Oh, my God. Anyway, folks, we are now in the third and post-show edition hour of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast, and of course, I'm your host, the man they call Ghost. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm tired. I'm tired of all this crap, man. I'm tired of all this goddamn garbage. I'm, I'm not joking around with you folks, all right? I deserve a little respect, for Christ's sake, man. I just celebrated my 500th episode of all time. I've been broadcasting since 2008. I've had an extensive broadcasting career, an extensive Internet broadcasting career. I deserve respect. I deserve it. Jesus 
Christ, man. Anyway, folks, I'm sorry for going off keister. Uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just tired of this crap, man. You know what I mean? I'm not joking. I mean, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just tired of this crap, man. I'm tired of it, man. Anyway, folks, look, I, I, I don't even know what I'm even doing here on the third hour, all right? I know I missed a couple of things here, and I def- definitely want to talk about them, but God damn, man, you people are scumbags, man. I'm serious. I mean, every time I do another episode, it almost makes me feel like, man, what the hell am I doing? You know, what are you doing, ghost? You know, what in the hell are you doing? I'm serious, man. I mean, uh... anyway. Let me just calm down here. Right? Let me, I'm going a little off keister. We are talking a little bit about Bitcoin before we went into uh, the radio graffiti calls. Uh, I want to talk about this Muslim, uh, you know, of course, connected to ISIS. The religion of peace strikes again. Uh, Muslim storm a church in uh, Normandy, France, and behead a priest, for Christ's sake. That's why yours truly was a little upset during the goddamn Twitter shoutouts. Of course, uh, the religion of peace, uh, you know, uh, beheading another goddamn... I mean, what what the hell is up with this beheading, man? I know it says it in the Koran. I mean, but we haven't seen beheading since, like, the medieval times, for Christ's sake. What the hell's going on here? What the hell's going on here, for Christ's sake, man? I'm telling you. Uh, I, I, look, I've said this, and I'll say it again. I personally believe that Europe is gone. All right, the whole continent of Europe is gone, and the reason it's gone, folks, is because the international bureaucratic institutionalists have allowed the migrant crisis to happen within the European Union nation states so that it can solidify the totalitarian rule of the European Union as the sole authority over each and every one of those nation states. Do you understand that? They're trying to eliminate the whole concept of European Union member nation states. They are trying to consolidate everything. Why do you think that our brethren from across the pond in Britannia, when they voted Brexit, was such an important pinnacle of history as it relates to humanity separating ourselves from this ridiculous bureaucracy that is international bureaucratic institutionalism? Do you understand that? And I salute my brethren from across the pond over there. I'm glad they rose up in unison and voted to get the hell out of the European Union. I think that they saved their country accordingly. I can't say the same for London Stan, but that just goes to show you, even though these damn liberal leftist pieces of trash move into the municipalities, as long as the people within the country stay together and act unified behind the cause, and in the cause in Brexit was to leave this disgusting, filthy, international bureaucratic institution called the European Union. I'm telling you this right now. I salute my brethren from across the pond, and we, what we are going to do, we are going to elect Donald Trump because we are going to separate ourselves from these international bureaucratic institutions, all right? We are not going to bind the world with bureaucrats, all right? With stupid, soulless, disconnected bureaucrats. Do you understand that, boy? We are not going to allow this. That's why the capitalist army is conducting its operations. That's why the Trump train is working in conjunction with the capitalist army to do whatever it takes, boy. And as I stated, don't be surprised to hear more and more of yours truly's euphemisms of his verbiage in the speeches of Donald Trump, boy. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Yours truly is deeper than you think, boy, and don't you ever forget it, and that's all I'm going to say about that. This isn't a goddamn game, boy. We want to make sure that we have... Donald Trump is our president so we can bring in capitalism back to America, so we can open up our economy to new capitalists, to new American capitalists. I'm telling you this right now. 
Anyway, folks, uh, once again, uh, the religion of peace strikes again, all right? Muslims, according to reports connected to ISIS, uh, storm a church in France, behead a priest. From what I understand, they filmed it, for Christ's sake, so we should be uh, getting the rounds of that horrific event, all right? I mean, what, what, they're cutting off heads, for Christ's sake! They're cutting off heads! I mean, this is the kind of barbaric nonsense that we're having to deal with, for Christ's sake. And haven't you noticed, folks, that these terrorists, these Islamic Muslim terrorists, they go after the weakest targets possible? It's almost as if they don't even want to confront any kind of opposition that will kill their wild jihudi asses before they actually implement their goddamn terrorist acts. It's always women. It's always children. It's always elderly folks, for Christ's sake. It's always the weakest people that these goddamn Islamic terrorist scumbags continue to terrorize, continue to kill with terrorism, for Christ's sake. All right? They always go after the weakest people. It doesn't matter what part of the world that you're in. All right? They go after the weakest goddamn people. It's pathetic. It's pathetic, man. That's why if Donald Trump came in as president... And believe me, folks, we're going to have to go in and clean up what the damn Obama and Hillary, admin Hillary Clinton administration created. Because they created ISIS, folks, all right? And I have tweeted the interview with General Michael T. Flynn, and that's why they even entertained Michael T. Flynn as a vice presidential candidate, because they wanted to make sure that the Democrats were shaken in their boots, as it related to Michael T. Flynn talking about how this administration armed, funded, and trained the so-called ISIS fighters that are now sitting here supposedly causing us terrorism, all right? And let me tell you, Michael T. Flynn is a general, and he was the head of the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, which is the CIA of the Pentagon. Do you understand? So he knew all the intelligence. And this man, General Michael T. Flynn, stated that Obama made a willful decision to arm, fund, and train ISIS. And now we are dealing with that fact. All right? And that's why Donald Trump is so confident that we can just go in and just scrape the floor with ISIS. Because we created them, for Christ's sake, man. We know who they are. I'm telling you this right now, man. And then once we, you know beat the crap out of ISIS, which is our creation, for Christ's sake. We're going to force these uh, nation states in the Middle East to either rectify the situation with their people because we're going to ship them all back. You understand that? Because they all want to go back anyway, folks. They don't want to stay in these countries, for Christ's sake. And if they do, they want to make it their own country. They want to take it over. They want to implement Sharia law. They want to, uh, you know, molest little girls. I mean, look at what they're doing in Germany. Look at what they're doing in France. Look at what they're doing in Belgium. Look at what they're doing in Sweden. Do you understand that, boy? I mean, you people in America that are continuously on this virtue signaling as it relates to, oh, don't be an Islamic phobic guy. Don't be an Islamophobic. Please don't do it. Meh, meh, meh. I mean, why don't you go and live in a damn Muslim country for all you folks that are still apologists and virtue signalers for goddamn Islam, huh? Let's see if you have the freedom of religion. Let's see if you have the freedom of speech. Let's see if women do have the freedoms that they do have here in Western culture and Western civilization. Let's see if the LGBT has the same rights if they're not outright killed in Muslim countries. Do you understand that? I'm not joking. I'm, I'm not kidding around. I mean, this is a culture that is obviously not comparable with Western civilization. Do you understand that? Jesus Christ. And, uh, once again, baby, uh, you know, this just in, somebody tweeted at me, somebody by the name of Rabbit on Crack, uh, just tweeted this at me, uh, breaking Bernie Sanders' ass convention to name Hillary Clinton as Democratic nominee for president, huh? There's your Bernie! <laughs> There's your Bernie! There it is! All right? Uh, he doesn't want any kind of a ruckus. He 
he's a complete fraud. Each and every one of you people that supported him, you have been defrauded, you have been fooled, you have been hoodwinked, and I hope that this sticks with you for a long, long time, and this forces you to understand that you need to vote for Donald Trump, the only anti-establishment candidate on the ticket. Donald Trump is the only anti-establishment candidate on the ticket. Because remember, both parties, both the pieces of crap establishment of both parties do not like Donald Trump. And let me tell you, even in the Republican convention, they tried to make Donald Trump have egg on his face. The freaking Republican establishment doesn't even like Donald Trump. That's why, folks, you people that are the burn victims, you people that have been completely betrayed by Bernie Sanders, it's time for you all to do the right thing. You claim to be anti-establishment. You claim to be anti-both parties, for Christ's sake. And you want to make a legitimate impact. You want to protest against what the Democrats have done for you, or done to you, I should say. You need to vote for Donald Trump at this point in time, burn victims. All right? I know it hurts. I know it hurts, folks, but you need to realize that this was all colluded by the Democrats themselves, all right? This was all colluded. I mean, look at the DNC leaks emails, for Christ's sake. It proves that the Democrats were colluding to make sure that Hillary Rotten Clinton becomes the nominee for the DNC. And now, you, as, you say, as I've said, folks, I've said it, and I've said it when I came back, I've said it ever since March. I've been saying at every show that Bernie Sanders did not want to be the presidential nominee. All right? He didn't want to be it. I mean, how much more proof do you need that he was a complete fraud? Huh? How much more proof do you need that he was a complete fraud, for Christ's sake, man? (laughs) Woo! Oh, man, and it's getting better and better. Look, I'm going to, you know, uh, finish up here. I'm going to take some radio graffiti calls. I think everybody needs to be watching this, for Christ's sake. Here's some more news coming out of uh, the DNC here. Delegates say they were told if they didn't put Bernie signs away after they vote that they would be arrested. They have walked out. Oh, oh. I mean, people with Bernie Sanders uh, posters and signs are now being arrested at the DNC, and yet you've got Bernie goddamn Sanders telling you all to vote for Hillary Clinton. How much more do you need it defrauded in your face? They fooled you. Bernie Sanders and Hillary fooled you all. (laughs) This is what the Democrats are. This is what the DNC leaks have proven, if you haven't looked at them, by God, go to wikileaks.org. All right, that's W-I-K-I-L-E-A-K-S.org. And take a look at all the damn emails, which is searchable by fucking, or excuse me, searchable freaking by search engine, excuse me. I'm, I'm getting upset here. You should be upset, man. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off keister there, you know. Uh, yeah, sorry. I said falcon, actually, not... Not that word. I said falcon. You know? Like, look at that falcon convention. Yeah, you, you get it. Anyway, look. How much more evidence do you need that Bernie Sanders never wanted to be president to begin with? All right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm telling you this right now. How how much more evidence do you need that Bernie Sanders never wanted to be president to begin with, and he was nothing more than a ruse, all right? I mean, how much more evidence do you need, for Christ's sake, man? I mean, the party is arresting folks that are holding Bernie Sanders signs, all right? (laughs) And you've got Bernie, and you've got Bernie out here telling his freaking uh, people to go out and vote for Hillary Rotten Clinton, for Christ's sake. Oh, my God, what a disgrace. What an utter disgrace. But you see, folks, you should have known better, to to be completely honest with you. Oh, you feel the burn, burn victims? You know what I mean? You, you you, You all deserve this, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, just take a look at a man's record, all right? Man never had a real job until he was 40, all right? That should have been, first of all, red flag right there, all right? Then when he became a goddamn employee, he was employed signing people up to welfare, all right? 
And then, you know, he became some two-bit uh, politician out of Vermont. Then he finally became a senator because, you know, what else is he doing? Never, you know, passed any kind of bill, never was any, any, any kind of sponsor of any bill that did anything of any kind of significance. All he did was, you know, make sure whenever there was a camera in his face, uh, whenever he was sitting in some committee to be some blowhard, for Christ's sake, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not joking. All right, I am not joking, for Christ's sake, man. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not kidding around, folks. This is great. This is great. And, look, here's uh, th- uh, thanks to That's Mimi. And, and like I said, I, I, every time I retweet these, I try to retweet them with the, uh, with the people that tweet them at me. But since I'm on the show, I'm giving them the, the props here. Uh, right out of the New York Post, uh, Bernie Sanders, I move that Hillary Clinton be selected as the nominee of the Democratic Party. And here is his little feel the burn mug going on right here. Here it is. <laughs> feel the burn, baby. <laughs> Woo. Oh, man, this is great. This is great. Let me tell you what you people, one more again. I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you what Bernie did to you folks. Okay. He did one of these. Listen, to the, hey, I'm Bernie Sanders, and I told you, I I told you I wanted your money. I told you to keep contributing to my campaign contribution account. I told you even at the beginning of my campaign that I would support the nominee for the Democratic Party, no matter who it was. All right, I told all of you. I didn't trick you. All right, I'm taking all the money. Over $200 million out of your pockets, which you barely had the money to make anyway. But, hey, you're taking it out of your college debt account. Don't don't worry. You donated to my campaign, and now I am telling you because I think you're stupid. I mean, you've got to be stupid. I mean, how in the hell did you believe that a prostate-infected man like me, who gets up at least five times a night to take a piss, is going to actually be the president of the United States of America? Huh? Look, I'm just telling you that I wanted your money. I got your contributions, all right? And, I'm, hey, I'm going to write a book now. I'm going to write a book now, and you peoples are going to continue to buy it because I'm telling you we're continuing the revolution, even though I'm backing up the establishment candidate that I said that I was never going to and that was uh, ineligible to be president. I'm telling you to vote for her. I don't care that they are arresting delegates that have Bernie signs. I don't care. All right? I don't care. I, I goofed you. You done goofed. All right? I did it fair and square to you people. There's nothing you can do about it. No refunds. All right? No refunds. There's nothing you can do about it. Huh? Now, come on over here and sit on Uncle Bernie's lap now. That's what I'm asking you to do. Come on, keep contributing. Come on, come on over here to take your underwears off. That's right, keep contributing. Come on, over here. Oh, yeah. All right, come on over here, take your underwears off. Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't worry about the pants tent. Oh, don't worry about that pants tent. Oh, oh, yeah, come on. All right, keep contributing. I'm going to buy a, I'm going to write a book now. I'm going to write a book now, and you are going to buy it because that's the revolution. That's right. Come on over here. Take your underwears off. Sit on my apple. Sit on my apple. Oh, yeah. That's right. Come on over here. Sit on my apple. Come on. That's right. That's right. Come on over here. Take your underwears off. Keep contributing. Keep, Keep giving me your money. Keep giving me your money. I need your money. All right, you're stupid. I told you I was going to give you everything. I don't have any money. How was I going to give it to you? How was I going to give it to you? Now I'm going to take your monies, and I'm going to go to Vermont, and I'm going to live happily ever after. I'm going to be, I have so much money now, I can take trips to nowheres until I'm dead. Huh? How you like that? Thank you, Bernie people. Do you feel the boing? Huh? Do you feel the boing here? Take your underwears off. Come on, huh? All right, sit on my apple. Sit on my apple. Oh, 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 you hurt Uncle Bernie. Oh, you hurt Uncle Bernie. You chipped my apple. Oh, you chipped my apple. Oh, 
That's what he did to you feel the burn, burn victims. That's what he did. Do you feel the burn now, boy? <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. Here, check this out. Massive walkout uh, has been taken over. I mean, look at this. Here, here. I mean, it's, it's unfolding as we speak. Here it is. Bernie walkout has taken over the media tent. Oh, my God. Look at this crap. Oh, my God. It's in complete disarray, for Christ's sake. They're talking about arresting Bernie Sanders supporters who are having Bernie Sanders uh, uh, paraphernalia in the damn convention floor, for Christ's sake. I cannot believe this. Huh? How can anyone still call themselves a Democrat after this? How can anyone even entertain the left of the political persuasion after this, for Christ's sake? How can anyone legitimately say they are for the people and call themselves a Democrat after everything that has been on earth ever since the fraud on Bernie Sanders to the DNC leaks to what is transpiring here today? How can anyone call themselves a Democrat any longer? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I'm not joking around, man. I'm not kidding around. Massive walkout. Anyway, folks, look, I was going to talk a little bit about how, you know, Erdogan and uh, Putin, they're going to they're going to meet next month, early in the month. Uh, they're making kissy, kissy face, according to all freaking reports, for Christ's sake. And look, everybody knew that this was going to happen. They're going to meet in St. Petersburg. And of course, they are now opening up diplomatic relations. And look, folks, I said this was going to happen. All right. This was nothing more than a ruse, for Christ's sake. I'm saying this, and I'm going to say it again. Vladimir Putin quarterbacked the goddamn coup in Turkey for Erdogan, for Christ's sake. He's an expert at this garbage, man. He's ex-KGB, for Christ's sake. Take a look at what he did in the KGB. He did this exact crap. Anyway, I want to toot my own horn once again because the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again, baby. ha, 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 ha. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, folks, all right, now all of a sudden Erdogan and Putin are freaking buddies now. Huh? Now you've got Erdogan threatening to uh, the United States to deport this uh, supposed uh, uh, cleric Gulani, or Gulan, I believe his name is, uh, living out of Pennsylvania, claiming he had something to do with the coup when it was damn Erdogan throwing the coup on himself. All right? And look, I'm, I, the reason that they're meeting, in my opinion, folks, all right, the reason that Putin and Erdogan are meeting is because they're going to plan out how they're going to take over the Middle East. That's right, folks. I'm telling you, mark my words. Erdogan is going to start incrementally moving Turkish forces right into the Middle East, and the areas that he goes into, they are going to be welcoming, welcoming, welcoming them in with Open arms. I mean, they're going to be welcoming them in as liberators, for Christ's sake. So, Jesus Christ. I'm not joking, man. All right? I am not joking. Just watch. Erdogan is going to move into the Middle East. All right? Turkey is going to move into the Middle East, and they're just going to greet them as liberators. That's what the Middle East is looking for. All right? I'm telling you, just watch when it happens, and then the prognosticator or prognosticator will continue to prognosticate, baby. I'm telling you. <laughs> Ain't nobody that prognosticates like me. I mean, you've got to admit, folks, if you listen to this broadcast, whether you're a legitimate listener or some goddamn troll terrorist or cyber vermin asshole, you have to admit that every time that you listen to this broadcast, all of a sudden these things that I'm saying miraculously come to pass miraculously come true or miraculously validated uh, i'm telling you this right now it is not a coincidence boy it ain't a coincidence you understand that <laughs> anyway folks before i move on to the final part of radio graffiti here post-show radio graffiti i want to let everybody know about uh, what's going on with these cans for christ's sake because i'm getting a lot of twitter uh responses on what when am i going to sell these cans what's going to happen look folks uh I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, I thought that we were going to be able to cut these cans down and be able to sign them and all this other stuff. That logistically just ain't going to work at all, all right? I mean, give me a freaking break. So what I'm planning on doing now is trying to figure out a shipping mechanism in which I can send people just the whole goddamn can, all right? 
I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, and for you folks that are unaware, I am going to be uh, selling autograph cans from Cans Not Wave, folks, with my actual autograph. They're going to be numbered, for Christ's sake. And I am just going to, you know, ship them all out. Now, I, I'm going to take the next few days, uh, the next uh, was Wednesday and Thursday, to figure out the logistics of this. And once I figure out the logistics of this, uh, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start selling the whole goddamn can. I mean, I thought we were going to be able to, like, tear them down, uh, you know, be able to give you all a piece of the foil or something, a piece of the damn uh, aluminum can. Ain't going to work. Not going to do it. All right? Not going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we, we get to that as soon as possible. All right? All right? I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not joking around. I know a lot of people are concerned about it. And as they go on sale, folks, uh, I'm going to start giving some away because what I'm going to do is is I'm going to start from the first ten. I'm going to keep the first ten for my own personal collection, all right, because I'm going to number each and every one of them, all right, and then once all of them are sold, that's it. Uh, but when I uh, when I sell all these, I'm going to number them, and I'm going to number one through ten, and I'm going to – I don't know if I'm going to give away the first two, but I'll give away three through ten – and I don't really know how I'm going to give them away. I'm not really sure, uh, but I, I am going to give them away for Christ's sake. And uh, you know, we're going to have some kind of contest, so on and so forth. But let me get with the logistics of that. I want to make sure that. And, and look, unfortunately, you may have to pay for shipping. I hate to say it, man. I, I hate to say it. I'm going to. Have, I'm, I mean, you know, there's going to be an option where you could pay for your own shipping, and then you know, you pick your own carrier and all that other stuff. But unfortunately. You may have to uh, pay for your own shipping, and I'm sorry about that. I mean, I tried to bypass that whole idea and trying to put a piece of the aluminum can into a damn envelope, and it would be like universal. It would be like sending a damn uh, letter. That ain't going to work, all right? That ain't going to work at all. So, I mean, I'm just – look, I know that people want, uh, you know, something personal from the old ghost here. You know what I mean? And I can guarantee you that I consumed each and every one of these cans. I'm not kidding around. I mean, seriously. All right? I like to drink, as you as you may well know. Now, people are asking me, you know, what about Johnny Walker Blue Label bottles? Uh, let me explain. I, I will consider that. I just want to see, because i got a lot of those, believe it or not. Uh, I want to see how much, uh, how, how many of the cans that we sell here. I'm, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know how many I'm going to sell yet. I, I haven't put it out yet. But if we sell all of them, then I'm going to go right into the Johnny Walker. I got a bunch of Johnny Walker blue labels. So I don't know. I don't know yet. Give me some time. I know that uh, people are a little impatient. But, folks, I'm a one-man operation. I've got businesses of my own. I actually trade stocks. I trade equities, uh, ETF. I mean, I do a lot of things out here, okay? So, you know, I'm sorry, bear with me, but uh, they will be out. It will be a whole entire can. Yours truly will consume it. I've got I've got at least uh I've got at least three or four different versions of of a can uh of what what my favorite beers, of course. I'm not going to say the name of it, but you know my favorite beer because my old man drank it. I got about four or five different cans. So everyone's going to get like a little different can. Uh, it's going to be numbered. It's going to be cool, man. I like it. I'm sorry. It's, it's going to be cool. Support for this podcast comes from the Utah Office of Tourism, announcing the Four Corners School of Outdoor Education, offering a wide variety of field-based educational hiking and rafting adventures, from day trips to week-long adventures throughout the Colorado Plateau. Nearby attractions include Canyonlands National Park, Hovenweep National Monument, Natural Bridges National Monument, Monument Valley Tribal Park, Cedar Mesa, and the San Juan River. More at fourcornerschool.org. Anyway, folks, let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and get to some radio graffiti because I want everybody to see what the hell's going on in this debacle of the the DNC. I mean, people are people are going out, and people are saying to flatten them. But look, I, I don't, I can't flatten them, man. I'm telling you, it, it'll it'll cost me more money to hire a Mexican to you know get you know, there and cut out the bottom and the top and then, you know, flatten it out. I mean, it's, it's, it's more cost effective if I just threw the damn can into some kind of, I don't know, some kind of tube or some crap, all right, and then just send it off to whoever. And unfortunately, you guys are going to have to, you have to pay for the shipping, man. I'm sorry. I tried to do it another way. I can't do it. It's not cost effective. It's not uh, time, it's time consuming. 
And moreover, I'm not paying a Mexican to do it, all right? All right, I'm not, I'm not going to do it, all right? So anyway, let me move on, and I'm only going to take a few radio graffiti calls because I'm actually looking forward to seeing the disarray that's happening in the Democratic Party out here, all right? Uh, once again, the new number right now to call in is 4253. Oh, wait a minute. What am I, what am I saying? You can't even call in anyway. It's the third hour. Jesus Christ. Let's just take some calls, for Christ's sake. All right, who do we got here? We got uh, Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Tango Whiskey, what's up? Anyway, let's just go ahead and get to everybody's favorite cartoon show that I'm talking about. He man and the master of the universe. By the cow, the breeze I have it out. I love that muscle head. He man. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that looks nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that cut right there. Oh, yeah. I like the cat cringer. I like man. That's what I mean. I freaking love so that. Hey man, it hits me hard. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, look at that rip there, dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Seriously, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being so goddamn vulgar. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, that, that's enough for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, man. I don't like these little these little gay uh, innuendos as it relates to you splicing me for Christ's sake, man. You know what I'm saying? Give me a freaking break. Jesus Christ, who the hell else do we have going on over here? Uh, And look, uh, people are tweeting at me. They're like, hey, send the cans unharmed. Uh, Whoever complains about shipping is probably a, quote, poor fag. And this is somebody from, uh, what's the name of this guy? Hillary Rotten Queef said that to me. I swear to God. So I'm just saying, look, they're going to be cans that yours truly has uh, consumed and and, and not to mention it's consumed on the air as well, man. I mean, you know, I've got, you know, I've been consuming. You, you've heard me for Christ's sake, man. All right? All right? So anyway, folks, um, let me go ahead and continue going, shall we? Uh, we got uh, area code, uh, let's go 929, Radio Graffiti. Hi, Ghost. How's it going? Um, uh, here's something for you to think about. Hmm. They should turn Area 51 into a strip club for all the fruit bowls. And why Area 51? Because it's always popping over there and a little bit of space for uh, Pokemon Go people or whatever those gay people are called. Oh, well, that's a very interesting, uh, to say the least, because, uh, I, look, I don't really believe in Area 51. I believe that whatever they're doing there, they're just, you know, uh, doing something for, uh, you know, aircraft or, you know, some kind of aviation Something related to damn government. I don't believe in that alien garbage, all right? I don't believe it. I don't believe in that alien crap. And anybody who believes it, uh, you know, they're degrading themselves as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? I'm not kidding around. Anyway, let's continue going, shall we? Who else we got going on over here? Uh, We got area code 425, Radio Graffiti. It will be legal in Texas to whip in your... I mean, what the hell is that, man? I mean, look, I'm telling you, enough of that whippet crap. I know I should have never done that. Good God. Jesus Christ. 469 Radio Graffiti. Welcome to the new Young Turk Studio. All right, this is pretty badass. It is actually still being built as we speak. Uh, don't don't promote that stupid news organization on my show. Don't be promoting that leftist rag trash. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. No Ghostini Radio Graffiti. Ain't up Ghostler. Yes, Jewish people. If it ain't white. It ain't right. You know the concentration camps just be hard. My race is better than your race. God damn it, that's horrible. God damn it, that's horrible. That's racist. How 
dare you? How dare you people, man? How dare you? You son of a bitch. I, I can't believe you people. Give me the mic. Give me, give me the goddamn mic. Give me that mic. Let me tell you something, you son of a bitch. I never said any of that crap. All right? Those are splices, for Christ's sake, and I can't believe that you continue to splice me like that. I don't appreciate it one goddamn bit. Jesus Christ, you scumbags. Let me tell you something right now. You idiots, you know, I'm telling you, I blame the single dirty dish rag whore mothers, all right? I'm telling you, that's who I blame. That's who I goddamn blame, because if, if, let me tell you, if I was your daddy, let me get my belt. Let me get my, let me get the goddamn Get this freaking belt. If I was your goddamn daddy, boy, you'd be in some hot water, boy. I'd take you to that damn woodshed. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't made a man of you yet, boy. Yeah. Yeah. You take it and like it, boy. Do you understand that? Here, this is for your dirty dish rag whore single mother, too. Yeah! 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 That's for your goddamn dirty dish rag whore mother, for Christ's sake. Here, here's one more for it, too. Yeah! 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 I'll take you all to that damn woodshed, boy. That's what you need. That's what you all need. You need some goddamn discipline, boy. You need some goddamn discipline that your dirty dish rag whore mother ain't giving you there, boy. Take you out to that damn woodshed, boy. Here, here, here. Take that, boy. I ain't made a man of you yet, boy. Ha, ha. Let me calm down here, folks. I'm sorry. I'm just pissed, man. Did y'all hear that racist garbage? That was a splice, man. That was a splice. Man, I'm telling you, man. Look, I'm only going to take a couple more callers here because, look, I don't know how much longer I can take this crap. Oh, my God. Who the hell else? 406 Radio Graffiti. Oh, Jesus Christ, we've got a Helen Keller deaf mute, for Christ's sake. I mean, what's worse? Jesus Christ, what's worse? How about 408 Radio Graffiti? Hey, Ghost, happy late uh, 500 episodes. Um, congratulations, man. That's a lot, of, a lot of time you spent. Thank you. Hey, man, I appreciate it, man. I'm telling you, it's over 1,220 hours of my life. All right, 1,220 hours of my life. And look at these people on freaking Twitter. Look at them. Spank me harder. (laughs) Give me a freaking break, man. You people are sick. Sick bunch of people on these internets. I can tell you that right goddamn now. Bunch of sick folk. Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got, man? 269 Radio Graffiti. Oh, go spank me. Spank me, Daddy. Oh, oh my God. Oh, spank me, ghost. Oh, my God, man. You know, you're getting fruitier and fruitier by the day. Are you in transition? Are you in transition, for Christ's sake, man? Jesus Christ. How about Anonymous Radio Graffiti? Hey, ghost. How's it going? How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I'm actually I'm really sorry about the trolls you're gonna deal with all day, but um, I just want to say I appreciate your show, and opening my eyes up to the corruption that is Hillary Clinton. Like, I really get pissed off when I see her face now. I, I heard that the FBI is gonna investigate her, and I hope they throw her in jail or something. No, they ain't gonna do a damn thing. She's got the damn uh, everybody in her pocket, man. I mean, she's got them all by the balls. All right, I mean, what she has in her possession could bring down the whole goddamn government, and everybody knows it. That's why everybody's complicit. That's why nobody's turning against her. That's why 
I mean, you even got Barack Obama groveling in the campaign trail for this broad. You making her let her use Air Force One for Christ's sake. Area code three oh nine, ready graffiti. Hey, great show, Ghost. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, who else do we got going on? Anonymous Radio Graffiti. Oh shit! Hold on, I got the wrong. I got the wrong person. Hold on, Anonymous Radio Graffiti. I mean, what is it? The Helen Keller deaf mute? Why are you on the? Hey, why are y'all on the hold? Why are y'all on the hold? Jesus Christ! Eight one three Radio Graffiti. <laughs> some pretty good penis sting right there. Pretty good penis sting, to say the least. All right? Pretty good penis sting. Uh, we got uh, 702 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. I just want to say thank you for doing the show, and um, I give a shout-out to a few of my friends. Go ahead. All right. Uh, shout-out to my boy Smaga, my girl Sam, and uh, long live old M.M. Thank you. All right, man. Uh, who else do we got going on? Thanks for the uh, positive vibes as well. Uh, 410, Radio Graffiti. It started as just one glass in the morning. Now she consumes up to five glasses every day. Second R is Johnny Walker, Blue Label, oh yeah. Uh, you know, what the hell is that? Well, what in the hell was that, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got? We got 512 Radio Graffiti. What are you doing? Just play with your goddamn Peter Pan? What the hell's going on, for Christ's sake? 574 Radio Graffiti. Get the box to this thing and send it back and say it was scratched, all right? I'm not paying for this. Give me a goddamn break. This is illegal, you know. Uh, all right, that, that's it. I'm just... I'm done with this crap. God damn it. All right, I've had just about enough of this garbage. I'm not going to sit here and take this crap, all right? I'm not sitting here and taking this garbage any goddamn longer, all right? Let me tell you something, man. You people ruined my 500th episode. You ruined my major reward. And now you're trying to make a mockery of it, for Christ's sake? You ruined my major award, for Christ's sake, man. You ruined my major award. Give me the mic. Give me the, give me the, give me the freaking goddamn mic. Look, you scumbags. All right, look, it came that way, all right? It, it came scratched up. I, I Look, I'm not going to pay for something that's scratched up, all right? All right, especially all that shipping, and it's your fault. You people were giving me a hard goddamn time. I was having anxiety, for Christ's sake. You people, and all you trolls, man, you should all pitch in and give me a badass major award. All right, after all the crap you've done to me. Y'all should all pitch in and give me a nice major award out here. Oh, my God. Anyway, folks, look, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm not going to let these people uh, sit here and make a mockery of this Taco Tuesday, all right? I'm not going to sit here and do it, for Christ's sake, all right? I'm not going to sit here and do it. I mean, I, look, that thing was scratched, and I sent it back fair and square. Right? I'm not going to sit here and pay for something that, 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 isn't, uh, uh, that isn't perfect, all right? Son of a bitch. 
And for you people that are out there claiming that it's my fault, it's your fault! It's your fault! You people have been antagonizing me, you've been trolling me, you've been cyber vermin in me, for Christ's sake, and I have anxiety, I mean, I got all this thing in my mind, for Christ's sake, I got to conduct a show, for Christ's sake, I was sitting here trying to give myself a major award, and you people just, it was your fault. It's your goddamn fault. Jesus Christ, man. You people you people make me sick, man. I deserve a major award. Over 500 episodes, over 1,220 plus hours of my life. God. Ugh. Over 1,220 hours of my life. Good God, you could care less. Ugh. All right, I'm getting the hell out of here. All right? I'm getting the hell out of here. I may or may not come back tomorrow. Who the hell knows? Who the hell cares? That's why you got to follow me on Twitter, scumbags. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one goddamn word, no underscores. Politics Ghost. And, of course, folks, every goddamn episode that yours truly has ever conducted is for free to download at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. You can go ahead and download every episode of this broadcast, all right? Like I said, I'm, I'm live every Monday through Friday. 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, for Christ's sake. This is for the people that want to take the show serious. You know, screw you goddamn troll terrorist scumbags. You make me sick. You know, you've been making my life miserable for the past couple of goddamn episodes, and it makes me sick. It makes me sick. I wish this was your face. I wish this was your goddamn face. I wish this was your face. I wish this was your goddamn face. All right? Anyway, folks, I'm getting the hell out of here, all right? Spread it around like wildfire. The True Capitalist Radio is live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash goddamn ghost. I'm getting the hell out of here, folks, all right? I'm getting the hell out of here. Everybody enjoy the utter destruction of the Democratic Party. Enjoy the utter disarray that is happening right in front of our eyes. And enjoy the new email data dump that's coming to WikiLeaks very, very soon. And be sure to scour over that son of a bitch like it's going out of style. Long live the capitalist army and death to feminism, death to socialism, death to communism, and death, death. Death to totalitarianism! I'm out of here, boy! Sarah figured out that by switching to Metro PCS, she gets two free smartphones. Your barbecue ribs are the best. Take the rest home with you, Sarah. Just like she figured out that by visiting her in-laws, she doesn't have to cook for the rest of the week. You too figure it out. Get two free 4G LT smartphones from top brands like Samsung and LG after instant rebate when you switch. Metro PCS, wireless, figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included. See store or metropcs.com for details and terms and conditions.